From the hot air balloon capital of the world, this is the 46th edition of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, presented by Canon. The world's premier ballooning event is happening now in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is Balloon Fiesta Live, online and on the air. The farthest distance in this event is the declared the winner of this event. They are scheduled to um, actually um, start their uh, in their liftoffs with a full set of pageantry here in just about an hour. We have uh, four balloons uh, inflated on the field so far. Three fairly well ready to go. Another one um, getting there. We've got four more that will be taking on hydrogen as well so that uh, we can be able to get these uh, balloons off. Again, it's a distance race and they'll be starting in just about an hour. So for those of you who are listening along the field here, I might encourage you to uh, head a little closer there. There is uh, a flagging area because we are using hydrogen out there. As we all know, hydrogen is uh, explosive and a dangerous gas. So there is a flagging area. Please stay outside that flagging area, but feel free to get right up against the flagging there so that you can watch this inflation process as these teams prepare to take flight for anywhere from three to four days. The trajectories are saying that once they leave here, they will obviously head to the east. That's the prevailing direction as well. And they could end up in the next three or four days in the upper Midwest part of the United States, possibly in Canada or even on the east coast. So most of them will uh, take out of here. The uh, winds aloft are uh, fairly quick, so they will move quickly. And then uh, probably around sunrise, we'll start seeing different strategies. Do you go high and go this direction at this speed? Do you stay low and go that direction at that speed? So it will be uh, certainly something that you're going to want to track on balloonfiesta.com. You'd click on gas ballooning and be able to follow the tracks once they launch out of here, out of Albuquerque. Again, that's going to take place starting in uh, just a little bit over an hour uh, based on the conversation I had with the launch officials out there. So in the, uh, if we take a picture of the balloons there, Phil, in the center of the uh, picture there, the balloon kind of right of the center of those three, that is the defending champions, Barbara Fricke and Peter Cunio. They're from Albuquerque, New Mexico. They uh, won this event last year. They placed 10th in the Gordon Bennett, which is the granddaddy of this. It's the World Gas Ballooning Championships. That was in Switzerland just three weeks ago. So they're the defending champions in their Foxtrot Charlie balloon. The, uh, to the right of that, more a little bit more rounded balloon, that would be Mark, um, Mark Sullivan and Sherry White. Mark is from Albuquerque. Sherry is from Texas there. And then on the left side of the picture, that would be Phil Bryant and his co-pilot, Mike Emick. I believe that's the Swiss balloon behind them. We do have a, a reporter and a camera down there getting set up near there. We'll be, as soon as I have confirmation that we do have um, communications and pictures from them, we'll get some more information from them down there as well. So again, if you've uh, just joined us here, this is the beginning, the inflation portion of the America's Challenge gas balloon race, a distance race, 22nd year for it here at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, which of course is in its 46th year here, or 46th edition, because we started back in 1972. We had a very fabulous hot air balloon flight this morning with a great uh, opening ceremonies, lots of great flights this morning. I've talked to a number of the pilots. They've had uh, great flights, nice landings. Some of them didn't go too far. Some of them went very far. Uh, I, th I think I read one report of about 18 miles before they landed. Everybody had great flights. We had a great crowd. And I see that we have a great crowd building right now for tonight's inflation and launch of the America's Challenge gas balloon race. And a little bit later, our balloon glow, our Twilight Twinkle balloon glow that will be taking place closer to sunset. Sunset about 6.30 Mountain Time. And we'll be uh, moving on to that. Um, starting that pretty much uh, about the time we get the gas balloons uh, into the air. So we've got a fabulous evening in store for you. Of course, after the balloon glow, we've got a laser light show and those ever fabulous fireworks brought to us in part by the Albuquerque Journal. We call them the afterglow fireworks. 
So I, I might point out a little bit uh, some of the differences here about gas balloons and hot air balloons. Hot air balloons, of course, are uh, filled with cold air by having the air forced into the balloon with a fan. Then a, a burner that is burning propane gas heats the air, and the lighter, the hotter air is lighter than the surrounding air, and therefore it lifts off and lifts the balloon. Flights of hot air balloons, uh, typically about an hour or so. These gas balloons, they're actually about one-third the size of a hot air balloon and uh, they are filled with hydrogen. So that's why they're standing up there. It's a lighter than air gas right off the bat. They have no burners, they have no propane. They have a whole lot of sandbags and other weight attached to the uh, side of the basket there. And that is their fuel. So when they want to go up, they get rid of weight, i.e. drop sand off the side of the basket. And when they want to come down, they uh, open a little vent at the top of the balloon. You may have seen those. They kind of look like a little black circle at the top in most cases when they were inflating. Those, that'll let a little gas out. The problem is, is you can't refuel it in midair. So you'd be very careful about letting any gas out to come down. And uh, you also be careful about how much sand you deposit over the side because when you run out of gas or sand, your flight's going to be over whether you like it or not. Now, you may see, and I think you can see it on our picture here, if you're on the field, you may have to walk around a little bit, uh, especially the two balloons to the left there. There are these little poofy things kind of off the top, a little bit off the top side there. Those are deflation ports. So when the balloon is actually on the ground and they're ready to let the hydrogen out of the balloon, rather than having to hold that valve open and letting the hydrogen gas go out that way, They'll open up those two poopsies, as we call them, or deflation ports officially. There's a rope connected down to each of those. There's two on the top of each balloon. Those are connected down into the basket. They'll pull those. It releases the lines inside. That kind of opens up. The hydrogen gas, of course, being lighter, forces itself out of the, ga out of the envelope there. And that's, uh, that the balloon then uh, deflates. And then, of course, the crew packs it up and brings it home for yet another flight. So the other part of the inflation here, we said we have four of them that are basically standing up. They're still putting gas into the last, the fourth one back there. We have a fifth one that is starting to bubble up there now. I believe that's uh, Phil Bryant and Mike Emick there. And the idea behind this is they obviously get all of the rigging done, connecting the envelope to the basket, all the weight plus extra weight to hold it on the ground before they're ready to take off. That is all put there together. And then they um, take a hose that's connected to the truck there that is full of hydrogen, and they'll start pumping hydrogen into the balloon slowly. So you get this little kind of bubble here, and there's a number of people that are holding the top end down. They want to get a bubble of gas in the top there. They don't want it mixing with any of the um, other air. Um, it's not an issue other than it dilutes the lifting power of the hydrogen. So we want to keep as much pure hydrogen in the balloon as we can. So they're going to kind of hold that down. They're going to get themselves a nice bubble of hydrogen there. And then at some point, they'll let that top go, and it kind of pops up quickly, and they'll be able to uh, then finish that uh, inflation of that balloon down there. I'm uh, just listening to the officials' radio here, of course, with two events going on tonight, the America's Challenge gas balloon launch that we're uh, watching the balloons start to inflate here. And then in about, uh, oh, a little bit over an hour and a half or so, we'll be inflating a couple hundred hot air balloons in our balloon glow tonight. So the uh, hot air balloon trucks are out here. Of course, we're inflating our gas balloons. We've got a great crowd out here. Balloons that may not be participating in the GLOW tonight are here as spectators as well. So uh, we're going to have just a fabulous night here. It's been a gorgeous day. We had the uh, typical mid-afternoon winds. They've already calmed down. So I, uh, while I have not been given the official word, I believe we're uh, going to be in great shape for our balloon GLOW and uh, earlier than that, our launch of our America's Challenge balloons. Checking to see if we have our uh, 
Nothing there yet, although my phone is dinging here. It's all right. So I'm getting some uh, information here on my phone about some different uh, things that are happening. I think what we're going to do, we're going to take, uh, we're just going to leave this live picture up. I'm going to take a break from my talking. We'll leave this picture up so that you can continue to watch the inflation here. We'll take, uh, take a break from my uh, commentary here. I'll be back in a few minutes as I uh, confirm some more information about what's happening here. And we check on our other feed out there. Stay tuned. Continue to watch us here on BalloonFiesta.com. This is Balloon Fiesta Live. I'm Art Lloyd, Jr. So welcome again from Balloon Fiesta Park. This is Balloon Fiesta Live. I'm Art Lloyd, Jr. And we are watching the inflation of the balloons for the America's Challenge gas balloon race. If you've just joined us, welcome. If you're on the field and you can hear us there as well, we are glad you are here. You are in for a extra special treat tonight because we have two very different events for you tonight. The first, as we've just mentioned, the America's Challenge gas balloon race. Um, those are the white balloons that are inflating out there in the center of the field. There are now one, two, three, four, five, six of those balloons standing up. There is a seventh starting to inflate out there. We're expecting one more to uh, inflate because there are eight teams competing in this competition. And uh, they are scheduled to begin their launch procedures and uh, operations at about 6 o'clock. That's a little over 30 minutes from now. They uh, have drawn a launch order. Because this is a distance race, all of the balloons will take off from exactly the same point. There is a stage or a platform in the southeast corner of the field out there. The balloons will be walked one by one up onto that platform, weighed off by the Balloonmeister Thomas Hora, and so that they all go out of here with the same amount of lift, relative amount of lift here, and that they all take off from exactly the same point on the field. No one gets even a two-foot advantage in this competition. The idea here is to fly as far as you possibly can and land safely on land. Water landing's not permitted, not uh, counted. Obviously, if you have to land there, you're going to land there. But um, we're, you, you get disqualified when you land in the water there. The uh, trajectories I'm hearing unofficially through um, my sources around the field, I've not been in any briefings or uh, talked directly to any of the pilots in a couple of days, but the uh, conversations that I'm hearing from folks is that they will go out of here tonight. And uh, oh, you just see that one just kind of popping up right there. Um, I'm going to talk, let me, let me talk about that since it just happened there. The idea behind that is, is that these are filled with hydrogen and they hold the balloon on the ground when they start the filling of the balloon with hydrogen. And they get a nice little bubble of hydrogen in there um, that they want to kind of set everything. So they get a nice bubble there, and then they finally let it go, and it pops up like that one just did there. Um, and so the, uh, that's how that works, and now they'll take another 20 minutes or so to continue to pump hydrogen in, and that will fill out like the others, uh, especially the ones that are kind of closest to the camera. Those were the first three up. Um, and I, those will be some of the first ones to actually launch. So they're trying to fill the balloons in the order that they will launch. As I was saying, they had a drawing for which balloons will go out of here at which time. That's the way they do these long-distance gas balloon races. Um, and so um, that's how that's going to happen. The balloon that's basically kind of in the middle of those front three there, that's Foxtrot Charlie flown by Peter Cuneo and Barbara Fricky. They are the defending champions in this race. They also finished 10th uh, just three weeks ago in Switzerland in the Gordon Bennett, which is the granddaddy of gas balloon racing. In fact, it's the World Gas Balloon Championships. This is a qualifier. So the American teams that place one, two, and three here are qualified to go to next year's Gordon Bennett, which will also be held in Switzerland. That race is held in the country of the winner from two years prior. So the Swiss team won two years in a row, so that's why the Gordon Bennett is was in Switzerland this year, and it will be there next year. Now the French won this year, so in two years, 
the Gordon Bennett will be in France. Now, of course, we say there, but they travel a number of countries and uh, go numbers of hours. Uh, most of the flights were a little bit shorter in the Gordon Bennett this year because the direction took them into closed, uh, up to closed countries, countries that do not allow aircraft that are not theirs to enter that kind of airspace. We don't have that kind of problem here in the United States. We can go all the way to the East Coast. We can go up into Canada, and uh, the winds generally do not take us south into Mexico. Of course, with the hurricane in the southeast part of the United States, um, we don't want to go there anyway, and the weather patterns um, should not pull us that way. So the uh, trajectories that I'm hearing, that I'm seeing, that I'm hearing from folks, um, upper Midwest, maybe into Canada, or uh, certainly on to the East Coast. Different strategies, winds go different speeds and different directions at different altitudes. So each balloonist, each gas balloon team here has their own meteorologist, and they will be uh, plotting their strategies as to what altitude to get into to go at what speed and what direction. Speed doesn't really count, although sometimes you want to get someplace faster or slower um, to get ahead of a weather system or stay behind one. There is a, a whole lot of meteorology, weather science, if you will, going on with how these balloons fly. So again, they are gas balloons. They are filled with hydrogen. They're about one-third the size of the hot air balloons that we have here at Balloon Fiesta. So 30,000 cubic feet or 1,000 cubic meters of, of hydrogen in there. Um, those that are kind of nice and full or fat, as we might call them, those are uh, uh, pretty well inflated and pretty well much ready to go from, from the gas standpoint. There's still a lot of work going on in hooking up the clothes and putting the food and, the yes, the porta-potties and the porta-johns that they take with them as well because once they land, their race is over. So they have to take everything they need for the next three to four days with them as they go forward. So they're, uh, they're in the process of securing all of that gear, making sure that all of their equipments, that their batteries, that their lights, that their radios, all of those types of things are in working order so that when they leave out of here, um, probably in the next hour or so, that they will be prepared for that three to four day flight and not have to come down early. Um, coming down early almost guarantees that you do not win the race. Um, so duration, we track that, but it really is the distance that takes us forward from there. So we do have a, uh, we're, we're trying to keep our camera on the field down there up as well and trying to get the uh, audio from the uh, announcer that's down there with the uh, gas balloons. We're having some uh, wireless interference here with uh, all of the radios and television stations and other broadcast things that are going on here. So we'll continue to stay on this picture here. And as we um, get closer to the launch, we'll um, start calling that for you as well. We just wanted to bring you up to speed on what's happening here. In um, New Mexico, Mountain Daylight Time, it's uh, coming up on 5.30 p.m. We are, um, uh, again, in the Mountain Time Zone, so you can check your watch there. We are about at least 30 minutes, possibly a little bit longer from the first launch, and we'll be um, starting that. We'll be calling that for you um, as that happens here in just a little while. So I'm going to let the inflations continue out there. Um, we'll continue to watch that. We'll continue to effort some uh, additional pictures here and additional commentary from the actual stage. In the meantime, if you're here on the park and you're listening, I would invite you to walk over closer to the gas balloons. There is a flagged area over there. Do stay outside of the flagged area. And we certainly appreciate all of you who are watching around the rest of the world on our America's Challenge Inflation Night. This is Balloon Fiesta Live on BalloonFiesta.com. Stay with us. Tweet it out. FaceTime it. Uh, whatever you want to Facebook it. Whatever you want to do to get it out to uh, let all of your friends and neighbors know all around the world. You will see America's, America's Challenge launch take place live right here on Balloon Fiesta Live. I'm Art Lloyd Jr. I'll be back with my commentary in a little bit. Enjoy the uh, pictures as we move forward throughout the evening. And, of course, uh, if, if you are putting your social media on there as well, use the hashtag Balloon Fiesta. If you are putting it to uh, Twitter and you have a public Twitter feed or you have uh, Instagram and you use those hashtags, 
we may be selecting yours to throw up on our social media wall as well. So uh, we'll be back with our um, commentary, our audio commentary. Till then, we'll uh, continue to check in on the live picture of the inflation here. And we'll be back uh, as soon as we get closer to the actual launch of a 22nd America's Challenge gas balloon race. Thanks. And the French balloon has, has taken down at this point. Um, you know, they're taking a look at that to, to, to see what they need to do to straighten that out. Um, they are the last balloon in the order scheduled to launch. Is she live? Very early on. But the balloons uh, um, uh, are, the order of takeoff is determined by random draw. At the pilot briefing last night, uh, they drew uh, for, the, for the launch order. And um, the first balloon off will be Peter and Barbara. Um, and uh, Peter Cunio, Barbara Fricky from here in Albuquerque, the four-time defending champions, just happened to draw number one in the launch order. Um, and then after that, Phil Bryant, Phil and, uh, Phil and uh, Mike Emick will take off. Then uh, Mark Sullivan and Sherry White. Um, then uh, Zapart and Caton. Um, then I'm, do I'm doing this without looking at my cheat sheet here. I believe Billy Imers is fifth. I believe Tiesh and Sebo are sixth. Then uh, Noah Forden and Bert Pedeld, and finally the French team of Pollard and Pollard. Um, so uh, that's what you'll be seeing when we get ready to do that here in a, in a few minutes. 
um, they will take each balloon and walk it to the platform here, uh, this big metal platform that um, we're standing on. There's a camera on it now and some other, excuse me, some other things. Um, so they will walk it, they'll bring it up the stairs. Uh, the uh, senior race officials, John, John Petron, who is the uh, event director, and by the way, the current U.S. national hot air balloon champion. Um, so uh, you can give Johnny a little cheer for that one. Um, I, in fact, I think he's the two-time, two or three-time defending champion of the, of the um, uh, U.S. Nationals. Kim, this uh, is so Art. We have Johnny. Um, we have um, Sam Parks, who's the assistant uh, event director. Um, and uh, then we will have our launch master, uh, Tomas Hora, who is a German balloonist, very experienced gas balloonist. Uh, when they get the balloon onto the platform, they will start taking sandbags off of it uh, to weigh it off, to make it buoyant, um, and to make it uh, to a level of buoyancy to, uh, so that the pilot can get the takeoff um, velocity or, or uh, rate of climb that they want. And then you will see the balloon take off. And uh, at that point, uh, we will play the national anthem of the country. Uh, you'll probably, and actually you'll only hear the U.S. national anthem once since we have four U.S. balloons. They will play it when the first one takes off from the U.S. But then you will also hear uh, played the national anthem. So the, okay, once again, that's normal. <laughs> what you just saw Willie's balloon do over there. Um, uh, they have now got it standing upright, and they can uh, finish filling it now. Um, Kim, but, this uh, is this is they, art. Uh, can you hear me, Kim? This will is art. the national anthem, and that way each balloon takes off from exactly the same point on the launch site, um, and and so they go. They all have the potential to go exactly the same distance. Uh, for example, uh, you know, say say they, they go out to the northeast, uh, Noah Forden wouldn't necessarily have an advantage. Uh, because he happens yeah, to be up on the northeast corner of the launch site, uh, because they're going to bring his balloon over here to launch it. So uh, uh, the balloons again uh, made um, of, a, of a kind of a heavy, um, non-porous conductive fabric. This is different fabric than you see on a hot air balloon. Um, white because they uh, they tend to uh, better resist. Uh, they 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 tend to reflect the sun rays a little bit better. Um, you see the sandbags on the side. This is that very romantic uh, form of ballooning like you see in Around the World in 80 Days with the sandbags hanging off. The sandbags are expendable weight. So as in the course of the flight, as the balloon loses gas and hence lift, the pilots can throw off weight. And in fact, anything, can, anything that has weight can be used as ballast. If somebody's desperate enough, yeah, we've, we've actually had people claim to land in their underwear in this race to try to, you know, to, try to get every last bit of advantage or, or to be able to get the balloon down safely. Um, so anything that has weight can be used as ballast, but in general, uh, the ballast you see there is sand, and they also use water as ballast. When the balloons go out from the platform, you will see that the pilot will have to get like a gallon jug of water in their hand and if, if they're not going out quickly enough, you'll probably see them pour some water out of that jug to get rid of, you know, if, as you know, if you've picked up a gallon of milk, that's heavy. You know, that's, that has quite a bit of weight. So by pouring some of that water off, they can get rid of some weight and the balloon then can, can gain a little bit more lift and, and a little bit more climb. So um, we're coming up on a, we're just a little past a quarter to six. The launch is expected to start at 6, may run a little bit late, that's not unusual. Um, you know, the, the pilots are taking their time to make sure they are fully prepared, fully ready to go. Um, you know, like you cannot stop at the 7-Eleven in the middle of this race, so they have to make sure they have everything on board that they need uh, in the course of the flight. So. Uh, we're still trying for Balloon Fiesta TV here, so um, I don't know, uh, Art, if you can hear me. Uh, go ahead anytime you're ready. Kim, I can't um, hear you. Uh, we've been listening to you for the we'll last... just continue... We've been listening to you for the talking. last few we minutes here. We have quite a crowd around, uh, the, around the launch site here. 
Um, a lot of people coming in for the Twilight Twinkle Glow, and they're seeing all these weird-looking balloons and wondering what's going on. Kim, I think you uh, have our connection now. Yes, I do. I, uh, in fact, you just about uh, finished off my right ear there. <laughs> So go ahead, anytime you're ready. Well, it was my left ear, so if we uh, stand next to each other, we'll still be able to hear everything just fine. So we joined your commentary just about the time the uh, French team um, took their balloon down. Uh, any more ind indication of what was going on with there? Actually, it looks like they're starting to put uh, hydrogen back into it now. I, I, I have not heard anything directly. Of course, I'm on the opposite corner of the site from where they are. But as, as we noted earlier, that's not unusual. Uh, you'll oftentimes see uh, they'll get the balloon part way up and they'll find out that something's tangled up or the valve line. The valve line is it goes to a circular panel in the top of the balloon that releases hydrogen. If that thing for some reason is caught up inside of the balloon, that's not good. And so that might be a reason they might have to, uh, to kind of regroup and start over. And I think that's what you've seen over there. Um, the French are the last balloon in the launch order. So that probably won't delay things too much. Um, and as you, as you can see, we pretty much have everybody else up now. Um, Vili is standing, and so, uh, so we're making progress towards launch here, probably around sunset. And I know that you have talked uh, about that pop-up of that balloon. I believe you said that was Willie Eimer's, the last one that has done that. I talked about that uh, to folks on the feed as well here. But it's probably worth repeating again. Uh, what's the deal behind that? It's like all of a sudden we're holding it down, and then all of a sudden it just kind of jumps in the air. Well, they're holding it down to try to get enough uh, hi enough hydrogen into the balloon to get it partially full. And I think it's... It usually it's like a quarter or, or quarter full or maybe a third full at the most uh, to try to control, you know, uh, to try to get enough uh, hydrogen in there so that it'll suspend the weight of the balloon and, uh, and then be fairly stable up there. And then once they have it upright, you know, they can kind of adjust the position of that hose and, uh, and complete filling the balloon. And the conditions here tonight, I haven't really talked about that. Uh, you can inflate a gas balloon in a little bit more wind than you might try to inflate a hot air balloon. But, uh, but the, you know, the wind still is a factor, and it is absolutely gorgeous here tonight. Uh, this is the first time we have had a daytime or early evening America Challenge launch in several years. I think the last one may have been 2013. Uh, when we were able to launch at this time in the evening. So this is very, you're getting to see something very special here um, where we uh, are in front of another event at Balloon Fiesta. Everybody can kind of sit around and watch. Um, again, you're seeing a different type of balloon. These are balloons that use a lighter than air gas for lift as opposed to hot air or heated air like you'll be seeing later this evening here at Balloon Fiesta Park. That's exactly right, and you're right. I mean, it's, uh, last year, I think we didn't start inflation until about midnight. By that time, most people had gone home because they're trying to get up in the morning again. So uh, this is a real treat for the tens of thousands of people that I can see from my vantage point down here at our announce tower. Lots and lots of people out here getting a double whammy of ballooning tonight. Gas balloons in the 22nd America's Challenge gas distance race here followed by our fabulous balloon glow with a couple of hundred balloons lighting up the night sky and of course the laser light show brought to us by alaska airlines and the after -glow, glow fireworks brought to us in part by the albuquerque journal so it's a fabulous night you know it got a little windy this afternoon tends to do that this time of year but the winds have absolutely as you mentioned calmed down nicely we are in for a fabulous night so kim what is the uh trajectories where do we think these balloons might go okay well i think you're I, you kind of cut out there but i think your question is where are they going to go um yes the uh, latest weather information that we have suggests that the balloons when they go out of here will go out toward to the east towards the mountains if they can do it they will try not to fly directly over the top of the mountain because to get that kind of altitude they will have to expend ballast which they don't want to do. They want to save as much of that sand as they can for later in the flight. So if they can, they will either try to go around the, the north end of the mountains or maybe through the pass over where T. Harris is uh, to try to limit 
the amount of altitude they have to gain. Now that that's one potential strategy. Now other pilots may have another another idea and they may want to get high very quickly and, and maybe want to go ahead and cross the mountains in the middle. It's kind of the decision of the pilot about what they want to do about that. From there, they will eventually kind of swing up towards the northeast. And again, you're seeing the French balloon stand up there on the corner. Uh, very normal um, way for that to come up. So, um, you know, the fact that it stood up like that isn't particularly anything to, uh, of concern. Um, anyway, once they, once they get out of here in, into eastern New Mexico, they'll start to swing north up into the Midwest. And we anticipate... Um, that they will probably end up somewhere in the upper Midwest, um, Great Lakes into Canada, maybe up into um, um, the, uh, even up uh, towards uh, New England, up in, up in that direction and up into Canada, if they can get a three-day flight. Um, whether they can do that depends on a lot of things in terms of weather and conditions and, um, you know, the, the individual factors on each balloon and, uh, you know, I could go on, but and you get the, the idea. And the strategies as well. While and you were talking, and, yes, and you were looking this way, way, I see the French the balloon French did, balloon did uh, now, now pop, back, pop up again, back up again. So they'll, so be, they'll continuing be continuing their continuing inflation, their process, inflation process, process as well. As well. That's correct. And, I, and so far, I haven't seen any indication of any problems, so that's good. Also, the, uh, the green uh, flag green is flag going is up. Going the flag up I can see is still yellow, yellow, but they yellow, just but they texted just out to the pilots and everyone, everyone else that they are putting the green flag up for both the America's Challenge and the Twilight Twinkle Glow. So, as we predicted, it's going to be a great night for ballooning hot air and gas. I am pretty excited. I don't think we've ever had a green flag for an America's Challenge before. So, that's a first, folks. You were here for our first today. And um, that's what the that's what the text what the says. A green, says. Flag a green flag for both the for Twilight Twinkle Glow and, and the America's Challenge gas balloon race! Balloon exclamation, exclamation point! point. <laughs> cool. Very good. Um, I'm sitting here looking at uh, the first balloon in the launch order, which is Peter Cunio and Barbara Furkey from Albuquerque, the center of the two of the three balloons that are down here towards the south, and th they are beginning to take. Did we lose her? So I believe what Kim is telling us there is we've lost her audio temporarily there. Um, there's, she was, I'm sure what the process here was is that they're beginning to take some of the extra weight off the basket there. The idea here is that there's a lot of sandbags to keep the balloon on the ground through this process. So now what we will do, they will, the crews will do, is they'll start removing some of that extra weight. Some of the weight there was to, uh, is going to be replaced by the pilot themselves. They'll get that so that they can actually walk that to the platform, as Kim was telling us a few moments ago. They'll be walking that balloon right to the platform there, where then they will weigh off the balloon again. So the, uh, so the idea is that they will weigh that off. They want the balloons to go off with basically the same amount of lift so that we're, we're making this as absolutely as fair as we possibly can, not only from taking off from the very same exact point of the field, but with the same amount of lift. You don't get to go out really heavy or really light in the terms of that. So they'll all go out with that same amount of lift available to them. And as Kim was saying, the, uh, then the uh, strategies play in. Do you go high and fast to go over the top of the mountains? Do you stay low and move around the north or maybe through the gap across basically where I-40 goes uh, around or even farther south? Those different strategies will come into place. Each of the balloon teams have their own meteorologist that they've been talking to for probably at least a couple, three weeks on this event, and more frequently in the last few days. So they've, uh, they're looking at all of the weather patterns. They're looking at what winds are going to take them, what directions, at what altitudes, to be able to figure that out. They've made those last-minute plans. They know what, the, uh, what, what they're going to do. They just don't tell us because it's all strategy. And so it's, uh, it's a, a great game that we just talked about. So the idea here is that... Uh, they will be uh, taking out of here. They'll be communicating with their crews and going off that way. So um, thanks, Don, for the uh, question here. Got a couple of questions from folks coming in on my uh, text feed, my uh, uh, message feed here. So they, um, these gas balloons, one, um, have aircraft radio. 
Many of them have satellite phones. They have their cell phones. They're, they're carrying a lot of equipment. They're carrying transponders, and they're carrying tracking devices. So what all of that does is, one, it allows them to, with their aircraft radios, talk to air traffic control, other airplanes if necessary. Usually they're just going to talk to air traffic control. Their transponders are reporting their positions where they are so air traffic control can watch them. The trackers are actually um, hooked up to BalloonFiesta.com. So you can go to BalloonFiesta.com, click on the gas balloon link, and see a live tracking map of where they are. Positions updated um, every uh, 5 to 15 minutes, I think, is what the time is there. So you can actually track their process at any time. And that's a, that, that uh, BalloonFiesta.com works great on your mobile devices as well as on your desktop computer or your laptop computer. So check out the gas live tracking right there on BalloonFiesta.com. So again, most of the communications, aircraft to um, air traffic control over the aircraft radios, they'll talk to their crews and or their weather guys using their satellite phone, possibly their cell phone, those types of things. Now there will be a chase crew that will chase them. And so after these balloons go off, um, again, it depends on the balloon team. Sometimes they tell the crew to go ahead and get a good night's sleep and then get up early in the morning and start chasing because the balloons are going to fly probably for three days. Although if the, uh, the intent is to go fast out of here tonight, then they might get the crew on the road tonight and say, why don't you make it to some point, and since we're going east, the first stop will be someplace in Texas, and uh, drive overnight to get to Texas, and then uh, take a couple hours and check in with us in the morning. We'll have a better idea. One of the things that um, I don't think we have talked about, Kim alluded to it, in the fact that all of these balloons are white. And the reason for that is, is because as the sun hits the balloon, the sun heats the gas. The gas then expands, giving us more lift. And if we get too much lift, then we have to vent the hydrogen out of the top of the balloon, which we don't want to do that. We want to be able to have save the hydrogen and save our sand for as long as we possibly can. So um, we want to have the white. The white color reflects the sun, minimizes, or at least attempts to minimize, the expansion of the gas there. So, um, and these balloons will fly um, pretty much at all kinds of altitudes. They will um, exceed probably 12,000 feet, which of course means that they will have to be carrying oxygen with them as well. If they uh, go above 12,5, the Federal Aviation Regulations say you need to have oxygen. Um, above 14,000 feet, you'll be able to do that. Um, as well. So they, uh, they'll they be carrying that oxygen um, if they go above those. Of course, when you go higher, the temperature drops about 4 degrees for every 1,000 foot in altitude. So if you um, go up to 12,000 feet, if you do the math, 12,000 times 4, that's uh, a 48 degree temperature drop. So if it's 70 degrees here on the ground at 12,000 feet, if you subtract 48 degrees from there, or we talk about 50 degrees from there, now all of a sudden you're talking that it's down in the 20s there. So that will be, that's the temperature change. Now, of course, the sun comes out and you're at higher altitude and you don't have the filtering now of that sun. So the sun is uh, very intense during the day up there. But then, of course, at night it, it's cold. So you get a, a wide range of temperatures in the balloon when you're flying a gas balloon, especially for distances. Many of the balloons will have sunshades to try and protect them from there. And actually, if you look at the uh, two balloons in the center to the left, that would be Barbara Fricky in the center and Phil uh, Bryant to the left there. Partway down, almost, you know, it's almost uh, all the way down, there's a little bit of lip of fabric there that's kind of just hanging there. And that's actually designed so if the balloon were to get wet, either from rain or just from condensation from flying in the cold, and the water comes down, that little piece of extra fabric there lets the water drip outside the confines of the basket versus coming right down to the center and down into the, into the basket and, of course, getting the uh, pilots and their equipment very wet. Now, there's a couple of other things uh, about the gas balloons there. We talked about the valve at the top that lets the hydrogen out. We talked earlier, which you may have missed, about those little uh, 
puffy things that are showing up on the uh, top sides of some of those balloons. Those are the actual deflation ports. So once the balloons are actually on the ground and they're ready to release the rest of the helium, whatever they have left, and uh, actually deflate the balloon, they will open those up by pulling a rope that comes down into the basket. They'll pull those, they open up, the hydrogen escapes, and the balloon would actually um, finish its deflation port at that time. And then at the very bottom, the appendix, that's the very narrow part down there, it's what they had the hydrogen hose hooked into. That's where they filled the balloon as well. They have the ability to leave that open or to close it. So the idea is, is that if their balloon is expanding because the sun has come up and the sun is heating the gas and it's expanding they can leave that bottom open and then some of the hydrogen gas will come out the bottom it immediately goes up the side of the balloon again so there's no issues there but that would allow that to happen versus them having to necessarily use the valve at the top so we uh we're, they're telling me that we actually can listen to uh, Kim she's on the PA that's down there as well so let's pick that up. Johnny Petrin standing over there, um, kind of on the field, on this side of the field. They'll be coming to the launch platform pretty soon um, to get the rays underway. Now when that happens, um, on the side where the steps are here, that's where they're going to be bringing the balloons up. So there will be launch directors that will be coming to, to create a path so that we can get the balloons up onto the platform. So you might, uh, those of you that are kind of right here at the bottom of the stairs and, and kind of down about, uh, you know, part way down the road here, uh, may want to start making a little bit of room uh, so we can start moving, uh, so we can be ready uh, to move the balloons up onto the platform uh, when they are ready to begin the race. Somebody was asking how cold does it get up there? Colder than down here. Um, I, I, Peter and Barbara in the Gordon Bed at cross, cross the Alps, and they were at 12 degrees. So as Kim was explaining there, just uh, what I was telling you a few moments ago, the temperature change up there, she was mentioning that Barbara Fricky and Peter Cunio, when they went across the Alps a year or so ago, um, it was like 12 degrees up there. And again, doing the math here, going up uh, 10,000 feet, it's going to be um, 40 degrees colder, uh, give or take a few degrees. So that nice 80-degree uh, temperature that we have down here now um, would be 40 degrees if we were to be up 10,000 feet. So it does get uh, quite chilly up there. Uh, again, they're carrying lots of different layers of clothes with the long underwear and the multi-layers because then it'll warm up again during the daytime, with, especially with the sun beating down on them um, as well. She was uh, Kim was explaining the uh, launch process there. She is actually on the edge of the stage there. And uh, very shortly, we should see the launch directors start moving those balloons to the uh, platform there. A few minutes ago, they were. she was telling us that they were uh, starting to remove all the inflation weight, if you will. Uh, lots and lots of extra ballast just to keep the balloon on the ground while they're doing the inflation, while they are putting uh, the final pieces and touches there. It also is the weight that the pilots will, it replaces the pilot weight once until they get in because they're working around getting everything ready actually um, even making the last minute change into that long underwear before they climb into the balloon getting prepared for the night as we go through as well 645 okay 6 uh, 645 is uh, what I'm now being told which is about um, that'll be yeah that'll be about uh, 35 minutes from now um, is when they are looking at beginning the launch so uh, we do still have some final preparations being made. Um, as you can see, Billy, uh, Billy's balloon is now quite full, but they still have some things they have to do. They have to make, you know, this is like, uh, this is like Christmas. You make a list and you check it twice. And that list has on it everything you need to stay aloft for three days. And you notice those baskets are not very big. So you'd better hope that these two people that are in that balloon like each other, right? Um, they, and, 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 and they do. I mean, they're a great congenial group of people. Uh, but some of the pilots have told me
Well, I'm sure what she was about to say there that uh, they have told her that it gets very cozy up there, and uh, you, you certainly do want to like each other. Most of these people have flown with each other many times, and if you can imagine, though, that you're going aerial camping in a very tiny closet, um, yeah. Now, the other thing that happens there, too, is that one person tends to stay awake and fly the balloon and the other naps. And you don't take an eight-hour shift in an eight-hour shift. You sleep for a couple of hours and you keep rotating. And if you kind of make that kind of schedule, then you can take uh, take care of that. It does get um, somewhat busy at times up there as you continue to talk to air traffic control. Um, and continue to plot your course. You're talking to your crew. You're talking to the meteorologist, your weather guy on your team, making the strategies, making sure that your balloon is indeed flying at the altitude you want it to fly at for the uh, direction that you want to actually go to. So there is, uh, there is uh, some work to do up there. One of the other things about flying a gas balloon versus a hot air balloon, though, of course, you put some heat into a hot air balloon, and it lifts off, and it immediately starts cooling, and it comes down. And so you put some more heat in, and up it goes, and it cools off, and it comes down. So you're constantly adjusting or trying to keep the temperature level inside a hot air balloon. In a hydrogen or a gas balloon, once the balloon gas heats up in the daytime, it, the balloon kind of rises to a nice equilibrium type level there and will tend to stay at that level until the gas starts to cool or you lose some ballast. So morning, evenings, very busy time for the pilots to be flying their gas balloon as they're adjusting their altitude by uh, letting out some hydrogen at the top or dumping some ballast, usually sand, um, in the evenings to keep from coming down too low. So those are the busy times for them. Other times they're snapping pictures and, um, uh, you know, uh, things like that. A couple of questions that have come up to us. How do they go to the bathroom up there? That's uh, Kim was answering that earlier for some folks. That's probably the number one um, asked questions because you can't stop at the local uh, gas station um, or rest area. Uh, they literally carry uh, the little Porta Johns and uh, Porta Jills with them, and so they will um, take care of their business of uh, doing that. That actually then becomes ballast, and we don't talk about um, directly, but we already have mentioned what happens with ballast. Um, certainly not over any kind of congested area along those lines. So yes, that goes on. The other thing is what about food? Um, the pilots tell us that they don't really get too hungry. Um, in fact, they don't get too thirsty either, so on their checklist is eat, and drink because it's very easy to get dehydrated up there. You're not moving around. You can't go out for a walk. So there's uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, reminders to yourself to be able to to uh, eat and drink and do those types of things up there. However, they don't tend to eat a whole lot because they're not moving around as well. I know that uh, many of them will take some sandwiches and some some crackers and cheese and. Um, just stuff to kind of continue to snack on throughout the three-day flight. They're usually pretty hungry by the time they uh, land and get the balloon packed up. One of the first things either is they uh, want some sleep or they want some food. Um, and sometimes it's uh, a toss-up as to which one comes up first. So Kim was mentioning, for those of you who may have just joined us here, that our 6 o'clock Mountain Time launch um, has been pushed back just a little bit here. So we're at uh, 612 now here in the Mountain Time Zone. And so the launch time is scheduled for 645. And so the uh, about a 30 minutes or so here from that launch time, all eight of our contestants, all eight of our teams are now inflated there. Um, I can't I don't have a great view on the French team, which was the last one to do the inflation there. But the idea here, there'll still be some uh, additional hydrogen probably put into that balloon. The other reason we kind of um, get things up and settled like this is because then the, the hydrogen, the gas that's inside the balloon, kind of comes to the same temperature as the outside air here. We don't want it changing temperature when we're trying to adjust weight for liftoff or when we lift off and the gas is still changing. So the sooner they can get up and inflate it and let the gas kind of settle in and adjust its temperature so that things are more stable and more um, level for when we actually go uh, lifting off of here. So again, we're going to be uh, starting our inflation here in, or in our uh, actual launch sequence. We're all inflated. Our launch sequence in about uh, 30 minutes from now. Um, and about the time we get them out of there, it will be sunset. 
So we'll have some great pictures, and of course, we're about to start our um, Twilight Twinkle Balloon Glow right after that. Um, I already see some balloonists on the field starting to lay out their tarps, getting their hot air balloon systems ready for us as well. Boy, we have a lot of folks out here. You are in for an absolute treat tonight to be able to see this double feature, the eight America's Challenge gas balloons taking off for their race tonight, and then our Twilight Twinkle Balloon Glow. And by the way, we're going to need your help with that. So um, be practicing your counting backwards from 10. That's all I'll say about that at this point. Practice your counting back from 10. And you know, this would be also a very good time for those of you who are here on the field to pick a meeting spot. In uh, just about uh, 40 minutes or so, it's going to be dark here on the field. And so what will happen is you're going to get separated from your friends and neighbors, and uh, you need a place to meet up. And there's some great opportunities because every one of our squares out there is marked with a white pylon and a letter and a number on it. So you might agree to meet at the intersection of A2 and B2, and that would be standing by one of those poles that says A2 and B2 on it. A is down towards the south end of the field. W is up at the north end of the field. The numbers 1 are over by Main Street where the tents are. The higher the numbers out towards the west, then, of course, if you are uh, confused as to directions, the mountains are to the east. The sun is setting in the west. So we are uh, live on Balloon Fiesta TV. I'm Art Lloyd Jr. Uh, lending my commentary here to the America's Challenge gas balloon race. Larry Aaron's due to join me as we get ready for the balloon glow. We have uh, Kim Vesley down there on the platform calling the uh, launch for us. And uh, every time we get a chance to uh, pick up her audio, we'll uh, bring that to you. So uh, she is uh, more about halfway down the field. So she's uh, quite a ways from us in that right in the middle of uh, a lot of other TV station broadcast things like that. And uh, not to mention, you know, 20,000 people here using their cell phones, a whole lot of wireless communication going on here. And so we apologize that we can't keep her audio going um, all the time. We'll bring it to you as often and as frequently as we can. If not, we'll call it from here. We've, uh, we've done this before. We'll let you know what's uh, happening as we go through that process. So since we have about 30 minutes before the uh, gas balloons will launch, we'll continue to keep our live picture up here. And uh, we'll break in with our uh, audio commentary as we see things happening to keep you up to speed on that. Again, this is Balloon Fiesta live on BalloonFiesta.com. Be sure and tell all your friends. And if you are tweeting or posting to Instagram, we're watching for your tweets and pictures. Put them on Balloon Fiesta. Put them on your Instagram. Tag it with Balloon Fiesta. And uh, you may see it show up on our social media feed. Or if you're here on the field, we are showing it on our video walls and our video screens there as well. We'd love to see those for you. And, of course, you can do a search and see those as well. But hashtag Balloon Fiesta, and we will see your pictures. There's a great one from this morning. So Summer is telling us what a magical day. They're enjoying their visit to New Mexico. The ultimate mommy-daughter experience. Uh, yes, it is. And uh, not just mommy-daughter, but for everyone as well. So we'll be back with more audio here for you in uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Our launch scheduled for about 25 minutes from now. Until then, enjoy the pictures on Balloon Fiesta Live. I'm Art Lloyd Jr. Back shortly. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Albuquerque and the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon. I'm Art Lloyd Jr. along with Larry Ernst tonight. We've got a double feature tonight, Larry. <laughs> a twin bill. A twin bill. You got oh, it. We've been man. watching for the last couple of hours the inflation of eight gas balloons. That's those eight white ones that are out there. They're filled with hydrogen, and they're going to be um, starting their launch ceremony process. And I guarantee it's, it is one to watch here. This is it's so different than the hot air. It really uh, is. It really is. It really is. So we're going to be starting that shortly. There's a picture of them for those of you on joining us on BalloonFiesta.com and Balloon Fiesta Live here. So uh, in about 10 minutes or so, we'll be starting that process. Now, tonight is also a hot air balloon glow, the Twilight Twinkle Glow. First one. 
first one of the, one of the session here. That's exactly right. And so, in fact, notice how the, the sun just uh, disappeared on the field. It's still up on the mountains up there, but uh, the sun just disappeared from here. So we are, uh, in fact, I think uh, official sunset was uh, this actual time of day. So that's right on, on schedule here. Our hot air balloon folks are being told that they can cold inflate. That means to go ahead and start filling the envelopes up with cold air. We see Cannon out there actually doing that. Uh, they will not be allowed to go hot or turn the burners on until the last of our eighth gas balloons lifts off. So that's kind of their signal. Okay, let's uh, for the uninitiated, you've never been to a balloon globe uh, before, let's describe what's going to happen tonight. Well, we're gonna we're just gonna have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so the whole idea here, of course, I'm not a, this this is where things come. Maybe get a little bit. Why are you in this and why in that? Because balloons, hot air balloons, do not fly at night. We only fly for 45 minutes, an hour, maybe two hours on a hot air balloon flight. So if we were to take off in the dark three hours later, it's still dark, and we can't see the ground from the sky. Right. Now, our gas balloons out there, they're going to fly for two, three, possibly four days, whether all that stuff looks great for a nice long flight up into Canada, upper Midwest, East Coast. So they will pick daytime to land in. They will have marker lights. We'll probably see them drop them out. We'll see them as they take off up tonight. So they have lights. They have transponders, radios they're talking to. And they're going to spend two or three nights aboard this balloon. They will. Um, again, three days to four days. So they will fly at night. Our hotter balloons do not fly at night. So what has happened here? Well, hey, we want to do something. And so why not stand our hot air balloons up, light the burners up, and light up the balloon as well. And so that we can now put on a show for the folks. Very good. And that's what we're going to do tonight. That's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> now, uh, I, I've seen this a few years ago, and, and tell me if, if it's changed. But the tradition is these are all mostly international and U.S. gas balloon pilots. What they do is they kind of march the balloon up on a little platform stage. They announce the the country your timing couldn't be better if we could take a shot of the field there, there phil right there. that's going to be the uh, u.s team of uh, barbara fricky and peter cuneo and that is exactly what you were describing larry they play the national anthem don't they they will they will walk them up to the to the platform right. there um, because this is a distance race so the idea is nobody gets any advantage everybody takes off from the exact same point the other thing that happens on that platform is they'll do what we call a way off so uh, Tomas Hora out there is the uh, balloon meister out there. And what he will do is he will kind of check their buoyancy. And he wants to send them all off with as close to the same amount of buoyancy wow. as everybody else. To make it a fair race. Um, it, exactly. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, again, it's, it, it has been won by uh, shorter distances. And uh, everybody does exactly the same. Now, these are the balloons that you see in movies and storybooks where they actually have ballast that they get rid of. Yes, they do. Most of those movies um, used what we would call a net balloon. Right. And the idea was it's this fabric that's filled with gas, and it's held together by a net uh -huh. that goes over the top of it. Now, we've kind of moved on from those net balloons. There are still net balloons that fly around the world. Um, all of these are more of a quick-fill design. So they have load tapes, load lines that are connected to the fabric and around the top, more similar to a hot air balloon than the net balloon that you would see in the movies. Now the U.S. team's on the platform right now. They're on the platform now, so they'll be going through that way off process now. I don't know if we have a, our camera shot from down there, if, the, if we can keep that shot down there or not. But they are um, on that, uh, maybe we can even zoom in on the one on the platform there, Phil. There, there you go. And so they're, uh, they're doing a little way off. You may see the balloon rise of a couple feet or two here as they kind of check that buoyancy here. Then when uh, everyone agrees that they are at whatever buoyancy they all agree on there, um, a final bag count, how many bags of sand do they go so they know how much weight they took off with and can track that. So they'll do that, and then uh, they'll uh, play the national anthem, and that is the cue for them to uh, launch. Now, since there are four U.S. teams in this race, um, they're only going to play the uh, the U.S. anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, one time. Save some time. They're going to play it for this right. first one here, and you'll start to see as um, 
we'll probably start seeing some movement here pretty quickly that the other balloons will start moving into position here um, even before we get the first the, one off. The crew wa literally walks them up there. It's yeah. exactly right. They get, they get just enough weight off so that the balloon is floating uh, off the ground there, and the, the crew is kind of hanging on to it and walking them along. And so um, I can, it looks to me like that's kind of a, that way off process is underway out there right now on the uh, Fox Chot Charlie is the name of that Let's balloon. Let's talk about life aboard the balloon. Obviously, you got to carry some food yes. with you and, and other necessities for a two, three, four day uh, balloon race. Food, uh, everything you need. That water. means, uh, you know, heavy clothes, extra warm clothes, cool clothes, sunset water, everything that you uh, might want to take with you for four days. Um, it's been described as camping in the air. Exactly. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, camping in the air is what uh, was that's what we call this. description. And you're in something that's about five foot by seven foot, maybe. <laughs> um, and so yeah. uh, you better like the person you're with. You should. You're going to get to know them really well. If you don't already, that's exactly right. <laughs> and they take turns. Somebody sleeps. Somebody's watching uh, the balloon flight and that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, it's not It's not as constant as it would be with a hot air balloon where you're actually burning maybe every 15, 30 seconds, something like that. Yeah. Once the balloon reaches an equilibrium and a pressure altitude is the term they use, once it reaches that in the in, – er, mid-morning or so it tends to stay at that altitude unless something happens where they lose some ballast or want to lose some helium or hydrogen out of the top um, and so if something like that changes then they would the balloon would start to change some altitude maybe they do that on purpose and so uh, otherwise it flies nice and level once the sun starts going down the hydrogen contracts and starts the balloon starts coming down. Now I got to get busy flying it. If I don't want to come down, I got to get rid of some va ballast, typically sand, those types of things. So late afternoon, early morning, most busiest time um, in flying a gas balloon. Look at the crowd down there to watch this. This is this terrific. Is, yes. Look at that. And it's a great time to remind folks that um, these balloons not only are they carrying transponders and aircraft radio to talk to aircraft and air traffic control they are carrying a balloon fiesta tracker so the idea is is that you can watch the position of these balloons as they go through their four days three days four days of flight and you can track them all directly on balloonfiesta.com just click on the gas link in live tracking in fact i think they're even putting that link up in the uh, on the main page okay got a couple more questions for you on this yes this, sir because this is fun uh what kind of altitudes are we looking for uh, with these gas balloons does it is there a, does it vary? It does, because winds go different directions at different speeds at different altitudes. So if I want to go a particular direction, and that happens to be at 12,000 feet, then I want to yeah. put the balloon at 12,000 feet. If, it, uh, if that's the wrong direction, then I get out of the 12,000-foot uh, level here. 12,000 foot is not uncommon for a gas balloon to fly at. Um, they typically do not go above 18,000 because we're still flying under visual flight rules. Above 18,000 feet, now we're in instrument flight rules, and we can't control the balloon by instruments. Again, we only have up and down control. So um, 18,000 feet is basically the limit for gas balloons. The other question, do they have a chase crew? They do. They do. They're, somebody's going to have to go retrieve them. And so there's even a couple of different strategies on the uh, how, how you manage them as well. Um, in many years past, we've gone out of here at such a slow pace. In fact, there they go. I'm going to stop there that here. So here goes Fox Todd Charlie. This is uh, Barbara Fricky and Peter Cuneo. Uh, big wave, uh, big cheer crowd. going from there. Yeah. They are the defending champions in this race, by the way. Four-time right. winners here. They are, they hold wow, the most the, wins. The, ascent on that balloon. the most win, uh, the most wins by the same couple. Uh, the late Richard Abruzzo has won this five times, although he has won it with different partners each time. Oh. So there goes our first one, America's Challenge, team number one, Foxtrot Charlie. That is Barbara Fricky and Peter Cuneo from Albuquerque. They just placed 10th just three weeks ago over in Europe in the Gordon Bennett race. This so we wish great. them a great luck. Um, I have a little special interest in there. I've helped them launch that balloon a number of times. I'm missing the fact that I wasn't out there with them, no. but uh, certainly wish them a great luck and success oh, on is, their flight. This is great to see. And, um, and so now you see, uh, so they've gone up fairly high, fairly quickly. They're not hanging low, and they're getting a direction off to the southeast here. So the thinking there, 
just on this little bit here is they might be able to go south and cut through what we call the gap, basically through to Harris Canyon out there and be able to swim through there. The other strategy is to go up and go high and go over the mountain, but that expends a lot of ballast that we don't want to uh, don't want to do at this point. So this is a favorable direction for them right now. Um, it's it's pretty favorable there. The the better way is kind of out to the northeast, but as we said, we're at the mercy of the winds. So if the winds are going to take us to the southeast, that's what we're going to uh, take. You know, Art, there's a lot of play-by-play in sports. Very few play-by-play balloon sport announcer guys, and you're really good at this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. This is really something. You know, it was kind of funny. I talked about the Gordon Bennett being over in Europe, and yeah. they uh, they had a, a gentleman over there um, who was uh, doing some Facebook Live stuff there, and um, so I was uh, I was chatting him, uh, text chatting him, um, while that was going on. So he would talk to me over Facebook Live, and I would send him uh, information. <laughs> and so we talked about the Albuquerque Bloom Fiesta going on, um, using Facebook as a medium here to be able to make uh, those things happen. So the balloon that has been brought to the platform there now, that was going to be team number two. That should be um, – actually, that's not who my number is. That looks like team number three, actually. Yes, it's team number three. That's West Mark West. Sullivan and um, Sherry White. There's a New Mexico flag and a Texas flag. I also know by where they inflated on the field. I was I was out yep. there earlier. So um, Mark and Sherry um, have flown together for a long time. They also participated in the Gordon Bennett uh, three weeks ago. They have flown here. I believe they have won this event twice. And so uh, Mark, again, is from Albuquerque. He's on the board. There they go. The name of that balloon, Delta Goody. And so off goes team number three, actually. It's the second balloon off but team number three. Mark and Sherry, Mark Sullivan and Sherry White in the air now. So I'm kind of looking up to uh, Barbara and Peter. Their direction continues to the southeast. However, they have um, definitely slowed down a little bit. So we'll watch uh, Mark and Sherry take off out of here. Now, we talked about being sand ballast, but they also have water for ballast. They they wouldn't be dumping sand over the crowd there. In fact, they're going off light enough so that they're going high and don't need to ballast anything over the crowd here. But if, for some reason, they needed to, they would dump some water so so the people on the ground, yeah, you're just going to get wet as opposed to having sand. The other thing we talk about is while they have 25 or 35-pound sandbags on board, they don't dump the bag. They have like a a little scoop that holds maybe a cup and a half of sand, and that's enough to change the altitude of the balloon. Wow! So it's not a whole lot of sand. So even if they drop some sand, uh, not fun to have it dropped on you, but it certainly would not uh, no, would not be a, a difficult uh, issue. Rapid ascent, it seems to me. Is that it the is. They're sending them off pretty light, but I think the, the the deal here is because there is that move to the southeast, they want to get them up fairly high so that they have a chance to get, if not over the mountain, through the gap there and not be trying to ballast up against the mountain there. So that's what I'm thinking is the uh, game plan here. So For those. Go ahead. Crowd on the field. What we're going to do is launch these gas balloons, and then the uh, hot air balloon pilots will take over the field, and we'll have our glow here in just a few minutes. And then we have laser light show, followed by some amazing fireworks about 8 o'clock tonight. So that's going to be quite a show for all of us here today, day one of the 2017 Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon. All right. Moving. Uh, so this should be, uh, this looks like it's team number four here. Again, apparently team number two has passed in the launch. They have that opportunity. Oh, They're see. not ready to go for something like that. They can pass in the launch order, and then they'll just come back to them around. So we're continuing through the launch order. So while this is the third balloon to come to the platform, it is team number four. This would be Christoph Zapart and Andy Caton. Christoph is from um, Poland. He has placed at least uh, second in this race a couple of times. Uh, last year, if you followed this race last year, Kristoff took out of here, went high, went fast. He was hundreds of miles ahead of everybody else, and he got over mid-Texas uh, over there and hit what we would call a weather wall, basically ran into uh, a wall of wind that just stopped him. 
and he actually started curving back around to the south and back to the west. And actually, the longer he stayed in the air, the, the more distance he lost um, yes. by that. Way. So his strategy, um, he, he still got second in the race, but uh, it didn't uh, didn't so pay off as well as it get that balloon down once he started going backwards. Yeah, because what it is, we talk about um, it's a distance race, and it's measured on what we call the great circle. So, of course, the Earth is narrower at the top and thicker at the equator but literally we would take a line and not on a flat map but on the globe you would measure around I so see. staying lower but when you start coming back you start losing miles so that's the uh, that's the case there so you got to uh, play all of those things keep all of those things into play there so again this will be the uh, the british or the, i'm sorry the polish u.s team of christoph support and andy kate and yes, there they go. You can see on our picture here, there's uh, at the load ring there, there's some fabric caming down there. There's a wave there. There's a nice wave. There you go. Confetti over Yep. Lots of times they'll do that. No weight there, just kind of for fun stuff. So there was a little ring there with some fabric there. That would be like a rain skirt or even a sunscreen there oh, yeah. that they would be able to drop off and be able to use. You, you, you run into all kinds of weather in this thing, so you're going to get wet sometimes. You're gonna... And we don't want to be in the storms. We don't want to be in the storms. But, you know, it gets cold. You get condensation. So that water will drip off the balloons as well. A number of the balloons did get into uh, rainstorms over in Europe uh, three weeks ago. And uh, so the balloon would get wet. They're high enough. The temperature's cold. The water would freeze. That puts extra weight on the balloon. It comes down. It gets into the warmer air. And now it goes back up, you know, as that just melts. On and on. So it's a whole uh, a whole wonderful thing going on there. Meanwhile, we're cold and flooding. We have the Intel balloon and uh, a couple of other balloons cold and inflating right now here on the field for tonight's balloon glow. So once these gas balloons get off the field, Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, then we'll get on with our I'm balloon glow tonight, and it looks like an absolutely spectacular night for uh, this first day of the fiesta and the first balloon glow of the uh, 2017 Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. So we've had three gas balloons uh, okay, yeah, so we, take we to the air. We've we got, got uh, what, we looks like fi uh, five five more, and the they'll, uh, they're proceeding with launch uh, okay lunch ceremonies on that right now so that's kind of the agenda here tonight folks as we gather for tonight's balloon glow this this guest race is uh, completely a bonus for uh, all of our all of our uh, spectators here tonight so it's uh, terrific you know we we talked prior to this uh, thank you very much gondola club very nice. All right, dinner. There we go. There Thank you very go. much, David. Appreciate the folks down there at the Gondola Club. By the way, the Gondola Club has a feed down there. Is a feed not working down there? Isn't it? It's working. Okay. But I believe they fixed it this afternoon. So down in the Gondola Club, folks down there, they're being able to see and hear our feed here oh, as good. well. Good. So they're being able to get um, all of this as well. Um, while we're getting the next balloon in place here, um, apparently there are some, we mentioned the fireworks, there are some cars that are parked too close to the fireworks area. So if you are parked way out on the far north end of the field, uh, there's a really good chance you're in the wrong spot. So if you're up against that berm out there and you have parked your car out there, please return to your car and move it before we have to go out there and tow it. Uh -oh. So uh, thanks don't for your uh, cooperation on that. That would be uh, that would certainly you be don't appreciated. Want fireworks falling on your car either. No, we don't. And uh, fabulous fireworks they are. So uh, you're going to want to be watching those and enjoying those versus uh, wondering what's going on uh, and where is my car being uh, towed off to. Yeah. So this should be uh, team number five. Uh, yes, this is going to be team number five. I recognize the uh, designs and the shapes on there. This is, um, uh, gosh, one of the, uh, the long-time well-known outstanding gas balloonists. Willie Eimers here is flying with his son, Sebastian, who is another uh, fabulous. Willie actually has um, what they kind of call, I think they call it a farm, a place in Germany. They're from Germany. Um, and it, he built this little place basically right on top of a hydrogen transmission line, which means <laughs> they don't have to bring a truck in. They've got a tap right there oh into a hydrogen pipe. Hydrogen much more plentiful over in Europe um, and certainly cheaper over there. Well, how convenient. And, and it's great. <laughs> 
two years ago, the Gordon Bennett flew out of there, and it was just fabulous. He's got a little um, a little chalet uh, type of thing there. People go over it for uh, just a few euros, can spend the night, and uh, they'll inflate the balloon. A crew will inflate the balloon. He does a lot of gas balloon lessons. Remember, all of our pilots are federally licensed, either in the United States or in the country where they live. So that is uh, uh, something that you can go over there. In fact, a number of uh, U.S. pilots will go over to Willie's place, uh, Mr. Imer's place over there in Germany, and uh, take their lessons there. It's pretty easy. There's uh, The requirements, I should say, are not so uh, daunting, if you will, if you already have a hot air balloon license. Because you've been through the ground school, you've been certified to fly lighter than aircraft balloons. So to get a license for this is not a big jump. There's a couple of requirements. You have to take at least two flights. There has to be a certain amount of, dura of duration you here. You have to be uh, the pilot in command. You have to go to a certain altitude. Um, and uh, basically that allows you to remove the restriction of an onboard heater with your lighter than air license. Oh, so there goes the uh, Imers, father and son team of uh, Willie Imers and Sebastian Imers. That's the uh, balloon called... Uh, that, no, I don't have the name for that one. But there they go off as well. And I noticed that I've lost the others over the uh, building here. The so folks on the field might be able to see them. So this is one of those where tomorrow morning they're not going to be in sight here. You're going to be watching them on balloonfiesta.com and the live tracker there. You know, there's been years where you get up in the morning six to eight hours later, the balloons are still hanging here. We're flying back I've over the that. field as well. Yeah. What is that thing hanging in the sky? Oh, right. It's gas balloon. Yeah, we start getting those reports of all the uh, UFOs up there as well. Oh, look at look at our cold inflate starting to really uh, take place here. This yeah, the timing of this couldn't be better yeah. to launch these gas balloons out of here um, right as the sun has gone down. We still get enough, we have enough light to see them go off, and it'll be dark enough for our hot air for our hot air balloons to do their uh, twilight twinkle glow as well. Again, we're streaming this. We are. Go go to balloonfiesta.com for the live stream for tonight's events. All the events here at the Balloon Fiesta this year will be live streamed. And um, archived. So if you miss oh. it, or you can go back and relive it as well. I, I should mention this morning's show. We had a great show this morning. A few little glitches that, that will work out here. But we, we had a great show this morning. It's archived there. Um, as of a, a, an hour or so ago, it had a September date and a test fee name on it. Yeah. So we're working with our web guys to get the name and the date corrected on there. But it is the video from this so, morning. Yeah, so. I did watch part of it there. Good. And you may have seen, if you're watching on la, la, our live stream here, hashtag Balloon Fiesta on Twitter or on Instagram. We're uh, watching those. There's the feed right there for those of you watching online. Uh, hashtag Balloon Fiesta, again, Instagram or Twitter. Uh, we're capturing those for you and uh, throwing them up as we see them here or as we get a chance to put them. So there's a great picture of uh, New Mexico True, the Truly balloon there. And uh, just lots of love going on to Bill Lee and that balloon there. Oh, today's Bill, uh, Bill Lee's wife's birthday? Jennifer's birthday. I didn't know that. Been talking to her about the Gallup Red Rock Balloon Rally taking place the first weekend in February. So uh, be registered to fly out that way um, as well. So uh, happy birthday, Jennifer. Yeah. Bill, if you hear us, make sure you give her a big kiss for us. <laughs> so on the, uh, on the uh, platform there, this would be the Swiss team of, uh, now this is where I find out how well my, uh, my foreign languages are. So I believe it's uh, Nicholas Touche and Lawrence Schiebold. They are both from Switzerland, and they are flying the Freiburg Freiburg Challenge Balloon. Well, you did pretty well with that. Uh, well, you know, I've heard it a few times. Uh, they are team number six, and so you start saying, "Wait a minute, there's still three balloons after them. How do they get to nine? Um, if you know, if we're only going to get eight here, it becomes team number two. Phil Bryant passed in his order." So we'll be uh, picking him up at the end. And there they go, the Swiss team of Duché and Sibo. Again, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance uh, just before they lift off. It's really quite fun and dramatic and the it tradition is. We can't, of this. Is, we can't hear it here on the stage it, it's uh, really on, our, on our vantage point, but they are playing the national anthem up there. And at the start of that anthem is when that goes off. So unfortunately, we are talking over yes. the anthem and they introduce the pilots and everybody's yep. cheering and uh, 
they had champagne, they'd pop the corks, you know, all that kind of thing. Well, uh, <laughs> the crew, Mike, but the yeah, uh, no, the, pilots, no, the pilots, of course, uh, yes, we cannot be flying with uh, any alcohol in our system, right. and we wouldn't. Um, those are things that happened way back in the 1780, you know, 1783 yeah. era, the early late 1780s. They didn't care. Uh, yeah. Well, that, in fact, we the the legend is is that balloonists actually carried champagne because when they landed, first time anybody had ever seen any kind of aircraft at all, they didn't know what it was. So by showing them a bottle of champagne, they could prove to them that they were actually human and just from over the rise. And it's also to placate angry farmers after they landed in the field. That too. <laughs> that too. Yes. So, yep. Now, you do you have think uh, some of these gas balloon teams took a pass to watch the others and their trajectory? You know, uh, that's a really good question, um, and that could be a strategy. Um, and the other strategy is they just weren't quite ready. They just didn't have everything together, all their ready, equipment yeah. together here. Yeah. So this would be uh, team number seven. And if you've been paying close attention, you'll notice that this balloon looks a lot like the first one that took off. Yes. And it looks a lot like the one that's kind of standing there by itself. Uh -huh. That's because all three of them were built by the same person. And that person happens to be the second pilot on this balloon, a guy by the name of Bert Padelt. First pilot here is Noah Fordham. Bert is, uh, and Noah's uh, fairly new to the sport of gas balloon. Bert is an accomplished balloon builder. He has built many, many, many balloons, especially gas balloons. A few years ago, Troy Bradley and Lino Tukayev flew the Two Eagles balloon from Saga, Japan, over to Baja, California. Yes. Bert built the balloon that they made that record-setting flight in. So, it looks like they have a couple little dimples or something up on the top. There. Yeah, yeah. So I talked about those earlier, but that's a great shot we have of those there. Those are the deflation ports. Oh. So when they actually have the balloon on the ground and they're ready to release the rest of the hydrogen that happens to be there, they will pull on the, blue, the lines that those are attached to, and those will pop open. They're really kind of tied together inside, and it gives you that little puff-up dimple there. I see. When they release those, it kind of is about a six-foot chute that opens up, and it just pops oh, up, and it lets the hydrogen go out from there. The balloon deflates quickly. Balloon technology. You here. certainly don't want to do that. Now, we can't see it, although on the balloon behind it, the uh, kind of the bigger one there, there's a little tiny black spot at the top up there on that one. Uh, Maybe you could see that up there. Yeah. So there is a valve at the top of each of these balloons that is spring-loaded or parachute top, depending on the type of balloon. They can open that and let a little bit of hydrogen out to keep from going higher or to come lower and make, make a descent there as well. So um, that's what we have there. So two deflation ports on the Padelt built, yeah. uh, which, what that, which that one is there, and then a valve up there at the top as well. So they've named that balloon Across the Universe. Again, it's uh, Noah Fordham and Bert Bedelt of the United States. That's a beautiful shot right there on our live stream. There's another beautiful yep. oh. There we go. There's a Very preview nice. of what's going to happen in the balloon glow. You see cannon lighting up there. Imagine 250 balloons doing that all in unison. It's going to be fabulous. If you've not been here for it before, uh, you are in for a treat. You, know, you, are, you and I have covered this event for many, many, many years. Since the beginning, yes. Larry. Uh, Actually, we, we've talked about this before. You yeah. were on the radio and I was on the field That's for the very right. first balloon glow here. True. I've still got the pin for the first one. I uh, still remember the feeling of oh, the first all burn. That thing I, was, just thinking about it brings back cheers it and was, chills. Uh, and it's something Scotty Appleman invented. He said, let's try this. And we gave radios to all the crews. Right, because you were on, on 770 air. KOB at right. the time. And, uh, and it worked, and the people went crazy. We've been doing it ever since. We have. But we've been doing this a lot of years, but I don't ever remember a time when we had the gas in the balloon glow happened at the same time. No, we've got the gas out early and then did the glow, yeah, or we get the glow and then we end up this setting is, the gas out later. A, but Look at this yeah. vision right here. Yeah, this view you, here, especially you see our this shot very here. Often. All these balloons, all yeah. the hot air balloons, cold inflating there. We've got three more gas balloons to launch out of here. There goes Bert and Noah right now as they take off from the center of the platform the there and across the universe. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, now that it's getting dark, we're starting to see the flashes go off. Yeah. We'll probably start to see the uh, marker lights start to drop from those balloons uh, shortly. So far, but 
Uh, yeah, they'll, but they'll we're uh, definitely on. we're definitely at sunset, so it's time for them to start dropping those out. Another uh, question I'll, about that gas ballooning, Art. Yeah, um, they have radios with them. Lots of them. So they can contact their crew. Aircraft uh, radios to talk to air traffic control, control towers, those kinds of things. Transponders so that they show up on the radar. Um, in fact, many times there's a website, and there's in fact there's a number of them. One of them is my favorite. It's Flight Radar 24. Oh yeah. So FlightRadar24.com picks up the transponders of all the aircraft in the area, whatever area you, you zoom yeah. in on. And so what will happen if we? Uh, and I haven't checked it tonight uh, because they're just turning their transponders on. Uh, but we should be able to see them on that site as well. But really, the best place to track them is on BalloonFiesta.com. Flight Radar starts showing you how congested the airspace is and why they need to be talking to air traffic control, <laughs> whether right. it's towers or um, centers or whatever it is. Yeah, we've got a center here. We do. We do. We do. Fascinating place. And, and yeah, they're also carrying um, sectional maps. So, I mean, remember, they're, they're, federal, they're licensed pilots, whether in this yeah. country or other countries. So they're licensed pilots. They obviously have gas ratings. Many of them have um, hundreds and hundreds of hours in gas balloons. Of course, uh, you know, when you fly for four days, it's easy to get 100 hours. <laughs> so, uh, I'm yes. I'm just thinking about the view from these balloons tonight with the city lights now. Oh, it's going to be, oh, yeah. We're going to see some fabulous pictures when they come back. They don't yeah. always tweet them out when they're up there in the air. Uh, yeah, but they're that's, a little busy. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, and, you know, um, everything has to have power. Um, so your cell phones and your cameras. Yeah. And so I either carry a whole lot of batteries. That's a whole lot of weight. Yes. Um, or I carry a combination of batteries and a way to solar recharge those batteries. Very so some cool. sort of solar panel there that helps us do that as well. So lots of there's, in fact, uh, there, Anoa and Bert have dropped their marker lights. There you go. So one solid light and one flashing light. Um, I don't know, uh, Brandon, can you get a shot of that one way up there? Uh, we got to get off your camera there, maybe. There, can we uh, get it up? I think he's off you. See if we can get a, a shot on the feed there. We can see uh, Bert Padel and Noah Fordham up there. There you go. And you can actually see the solid light and the strobe light now. So that's the uh, only thing that other aircraft, other than the uh, transponders and those kinds of things. That's a great shot right there so, on our yeah, feed. Great shot, Brandon. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, and you see all the sandbags, all those other things. Actually, I'm starting to see, look, there's a flashlight inside the basket coming on there. Yeah, right. So uh, as they're starting to check and see what's going on, making sure their instruments, what's reading there, yeah, just kind altitude, of getting settled directions. In. Yep, yep, settling in for a nice uh, three- or four-day flight out of there. So uh, team number eight is uh, now on the platform there, and uh, this is the uh, team from France. Um uh, Benoit Pallard and Bernard Pitri, Marie Barrington. I, I didn't practice these because no. I was hoping my friend Kim Besley would take <laughs> care of all those down there. There yeah, goes the go. French team there as well. This is the team that uh, Voila. <laughs> last year pulled uh, an entirely different type of uh, trick here. They said that they, the first year flying here last year, they wanted to see the Grand Canyon from the air. <laughs> Now, the wind directions typically are from west to east. And so trying to go fly a gas balloon from Albuquerque to the Grand Canyon is pretty tough. Yes. Guess what? They made it to the Painted Desert. They yeah. almost made it to the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so this, uh, yeah, so they, they had a fabulous flight. Maybe they got that out of their system and they're going to. And, and go from here. Yeah. yeah. I haven't, I didn't get a chance to talk to him and I haven't talked to any of my uh, colleagues and friends. Uh, and other folks to see what their strategy is. The strategy really becomes very close to the vest here. Yes. This is a very competitive event, and so um, a whole lot of armchair quarterbacking by watching what's going on on balloonfiesta.com, the live tracking right. pieces that are there as well. They're all ladies and gentlemen to each other, but this is this is competitive stuff. They are the best of friends and will help each other out in every way, shape, or form. But it's full except contact. how I'm going to get where I'm yeah. going to, how I can Full beat contact you. gas ballooning. Right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to have fun. Yeah. A good so, show uh, team number two, the last balloon to launch here uh, from the United States. This is um, Air Apparent 2, the, uh, piloted by Phil Bryant and Mike Emick, again from the United States here. Once this balloon uh, gets in the air, that is the signal for our hot air pilots to be able to go hot. 
that is to turn their burners on. Now, of course, Canon's been up there. Canon, a sponsor of our uh, presenting sponsor of our entire uh, balloon fiesta here. And I see a couple of other uh, hot air balloons kind of jump the gun there. But uh, that's, uh, well, it's probably okay. They're sending out the gas balloons light enough. If that were hot air balloons, we would say hot enough, but a gas balloon is light enough to be able to get out of the field. There you are. That's beautiful. So uh, we're just going to see them rise right out of there. Yep. In fact, I just saw a little rise. So they're still doing that way off there. You know, it goes up just a little bit. Yeah. And uh, make sure that they all go out of here with basically the same kind of buoyancy. So you can see the uh, that little deflation port that we talked about, that uh-huh. the little dip, dimple here on our shot here. So uh, launch them out before that hotter one goes uh, totally hot. <laughs> Very good. Now, now we have an eclipse of the balloon. <laughs> I traveled many miles to see this. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, let me ask Almost you. Almost total. Go, go ahead. Ask you about weight on the the balloons. Now you you could win this race with a little heavier weight in your balloon, couldn't you? I mean. Well, that's what that's what part of that buoyancy way off is about. We want to go off with that same amount. Now, here's the deal: if you weigh 300 pounds and your co-pilot weighs 300 pounds, yeah. and someone else's weighs 150 pounds and their co-pilot, you're going off with a 300-pound disadvantage because you I can't see. carry that amount of sand. Because the balloons, they're all the same size. They're a thousand cubic meters or uh, 30,000 cubic feet, about the third of the size of a hot air balloon. So they all have the same amount of lift. So, I mean, I know my friends, Barbara and Peter, the first one out of here, about July, they go on the gas diet because they have a weight that they say that they have to meet. We want to get that down to the swift. So sense. because if they're over that, for every pound they're over that, that's one pound of sand they can't carry. Every I pound see. of sand means more time. If you're 25 pounds over, that's the entire sandbag of ballast. So, oh, um, I yeah. can see that. that would make a big difference. There Small, they go. The last smaller, the smaller people. There they go. We're seeing them on our feet here. Great. Oh, look at that silhouette shot. Isn't yeah, that gorgeous? Wonderful. Excellent. So, Andy, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Phil Bryant and Mike Emick from the United States. Team number two, our eighth America's Challenge gas balloon to take off. Again, you're going to want to follow those on balloonfiesta.com. There is a link to the gas live tracking on the web page, either on, um, by tapping on gas and the tracking, um, or um, I, it, sometimes it is shown up on the uh, main front page there as well. So now that they are in the air, hot air pilots, it is time for you to go hot. Hot air pilots, light them up and stand them up as we say safe travels to all of our eight America's Challenge gas balloon pilots We'll be watching safe lights, soft landings, and favorable winds to get you where you go. So I, can I give a shout out to my friend uh, Scott Appleman over here who literally invented this event. He's in the Dos Equis balloon. I believe he's still flying that. He does still fly yeah. that one. He, of course, is the, uh, uh, I don't know what CE titles he has. He titles he has on Rainbow Riders. Basically, yeah. it's his company. And so, uh, yes, um, the, uh, Scott Appleman brought this to us. You know, Albuquerque balloonists had actually been doing a glow of sorts for many years. Kind of... Uh, Somebody decided, they, uh, the, the legend is, here in Albuquerque anyway, somebody got a brand new balloon and it came in, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and they didn't want to wait to see what it looked like in the morning. So they took it out and set it up in a park somewhere and, hey, this lights up. And so they started putting up along the country club area uh, downtown and on the golf course there they set those up and and did this People little balloon it. with the balloon with the uh, Christmas came out to watch it. Yeah, then. it was great <laughs> and then as you said Scotty kind of brought it out here Scotty was on the board of directors at the time and so brought that out and uh, we've been doing it ever since and it is a great event we learned a lot of things about that first one too we'll talk about that a little bit later but these balloons actually will 
create their own weather yes. at some point. We have 200, the, yeah, <laughs> 261 um, balloons out here on the field tonight doing this. So about half of those that um, fly in the morning for us. And, of course, we have a mass ascension scheduled for the morning. Half the balloons will take off and from the field, and then we'll do a whole second wave and get the other half up. We had a gorgeous morning this morning. Sure All do. the weather forecast is it's going to be even better tomorrow. Oh, so. yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So we want crowd participation in this. We're going to be uh, counting down from uh, here in the announce stand. And we want everybody to yell. And, and uh, last year we did some cell phone stuff, too. We did. We, we did. We brought some phones. of that in here as well. So we'll do so that. So when we're on the PA here and our balloonists are on the radios, sometimes they get to talking to the spectators and some of you out there, which is great fun. And uh, they love doing that. So don't don't feel like you're interrupting anything. But for uh, everyone else, we need you to count with us very loudly so that everyone hears it and we can coordinate these burns. Yeah. So we have the assistant balloon meister here. Melissa Healy is with us. I didn't say uh, I didn't. I, I just got that one totally wrong. As soon as that came out, I said, what the heck is he talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a bond is here, the assistant balloon meister, and oh, she's going to call you, the shots here with yeah, us. Yeah, well, you, you may Lisa not Healy's be back the, here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's the safety official. I dealt with her this morning for the opening ceremonies. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So, uh, oh, well. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm, I'm, she's sitting here. She didn't hit me too hard. She's not going to red tag you for no, that. No, okay. not for that. <laughs> hey, so I hope that you, if, if you park your car way out there on the far north end of the uh, field there that you went and moved it so we don't have to tow it because when we get through with the uh, balloon glow here we have our laser light show sponsored by alaska airlines and of course following that our afterglow fireworks probably the best fireworks show you will have ever seen if you've not seen them here and uh, that's brought to us in part by the albuquerque journal the local uh, newspaper that's right. long time sponsor not only of the fireworks but they also sponsor the balloon fiesta app free download um, lots of great things in there about our vendors, our balloons, even yeah. a mark your car. Oh, so that's when, cool. Yeah, so you can find it after the event oh, is we over. We got Arabelle up. Oh, there oh, we go. There's Arabelle. Yeah. I was out by that balloon today, as you know. You were. And, and, boy, what it takes to just cold inflate and hot inflate that thing is so big when you stand next to it. It's just gigantic. All right, Larry. So, uh uh, the word is that they are uh, ready for us to do our first all burn. Love it. So it's an all burn, pilots. It's an all burn. Folks, we're going to count back from 10. So we'd like you to join us. When we get to zero, they're going to do an all burn. So have your cameras ready. So all burn, pilots. Here we go. In 10, yeah. 9, Nine, 8, eight seven, 7, 6, six 5, five four, 4, 3, 2, two one, all burn. You know what? I think we need more crowd participation out yeah, there. Yeah, because they didn't hear. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're just warming up. First one for 2017. We're going to get better at this. So again, we're gonna we're gonna need some more crowd participation out there. They're getting into it. They will. They'll get it. We'll get oh, it together yeah. here. So the other thing that's uh, that's happening here is notice how yellow the flame is. So when they're flying the balloon, you don't see that yellow flame. You see a nice blue flame. A lot of blue. The, the characteristics of flame: blue flame, nice and hot. It's actually very efficient flame for the amount of fuel versus the heat it's getting. What's happening to get this yellow flame is we're kind of turned down the efficiency of the burner in effect. Uh, we don't go through a preheating pre process here, but because we get the yellow flame, it lights up the balloon. We would want to fly that way, but that's how we're doing things here yeah. tonight. So you tweak the, the burner, basically. Tweak the burner there, yep. Put it at a less efficient for flying, less heat, and we're good for there. You want to you do, let's do another all burn. Can we do another all burn? We're going to do another all burn, see if we can get that one good here. Time for an all burn, folks. Need your help. Come all burn. They can, everybody can hear us now? Good. Call us. Uh, call it down. Here we go. All burn in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 6 5, 5, 
four, three, two, one, all burn. That's better. All righty. Yeah. They kind of play off each other, too. They, they see do. that burn going yeah. on, and they said, yep, you know, we got to get that all burn up there. <laughs> I yeah. heard the crowd a little bit on this one. That was good. Yeah. We're already seeing the uh, cell lights out there, the uh, screens on yeah. the cameras and stuff like that. Oh, there's a great shot uh, from one of our uh, remote cameras here to be able to pull up that burner. Beautiful. Nice big yellow flame there. Great shot of the stork here. That's the uh, second envelope for that stork. I actually got really? to fly the first envelope um, up in Taos back in 1989, I believe it was. One of the early special shape balloons, Dr. Comodino. Yep, Steve Comodino. Yeah. yeah. So uh, his son is taking lessons now. May have passed his check right. I don't know that yet. Yeah, but I of, talked um, to him the, this morning. He was a nice yeah, guy. Yeah, he is a great, great guy. guy. Yeah. So. Okay. The, the reason we have to wait is we got to let the balloon cool down just a little bit yes every time they hit those burners uh, there's a whole lot of heat going up there the fabric at the top of the balloon cannot exceed depending on the manufacturer about 250 degrees and so they're putting a whole lot of heat in there and we want to cool it down a little bit um, that's why we have these pauses in here to let the balloon cool up so that they're not pulling on the vent to let the hot air out those types of things um, if we over temp the balloon we start shortening the life of the fabric therefore taking away flight time as well. So uh, that's you're expensive. right, that's a, that's a great point to bring yeah. up there. Yeah. You want to go for a flicker now? So a flicker burn here. So for those of you who have not uh, experienced a flicker burn before, this is a great time for the video to be on. So a video selection on your camera would be excellent now. Because the flicker burn is the burners going on and off in a rapid yeah. fashion. Boy, the video looks great of it, too. It does. Do the it. stills don't quite capture it, no. but the video does. So you have uh, five seconds to get your cameras in video mode. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> flicker burn, pilots, in 10, Ten nine, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, four 3, three two, 2, 1. one. Flicker burn. There you go. Yeah. Awesome is right. Awesome, awesome. See why we told you video? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know the other thing that happens here is the lighter color balloons tend to light up a little bit better yeah so um that's why uh, some of those are doing that the darker fabric tends to absorb the light there so that's what's uh, happening oh they caught me leaning back here on the job i'm just kind of enjoying the night this is like a perfect night for the balloon glow here the, the winds have been perfect we had our gusty winds this afternoon died down right on cue we got our america's challenge gas balloon race out of here and now we're having a fabulous twilight twinkle glow here tonight. We're kind of doing this in shirt sleeves tonight, too. I am. I, I yeah. took off. I got one layer yeah, here, my you know. Jacket, yep. but I don't need it. I, I left mine in the car. I might <laughs> have to even go down and get it later. But I don't think so. I think it's going to be a great night. Beautiful night. Temperature-wise, it's perfect. And like I said, tomorrow morning's mass ascension starts at 7 o'clock. Get to the field early. If you are not on the field by about 530, you're going to be in traffic at 7. That's right. So uh, get here early. Lots of crowds on the here. weekend. Yep. yep. We've That's been doing right. this. I've been doing this for 36 years and uh, in all kinds of uh, ways and shapes and forms on here. My fourth year as the announcer here at Balloon Fiesta and having a great time doing it. And I've yeah. done lots of other things out there. As I mentioned, I was here for the first Balloon Glow out there uh, putting one of the balloons up and uh, having a great time talking to folks. And when That's that a first legacy. all burn went off, yeah. wow, the power, the rush, the roar which is a great um, opportunity for those of you who are standing along the edges and probably those of you along Main Street are the people who can hear us talking here. I'm going to encourage you to walk out into the amongst the balloons. While it's really pretty from the outside, it's incredibly exciting from right there it's in the middle of it. So walk out in the middle there. Yep, yeah, it is pretty intense. What would you like this? An all burn they're calling for. So an all burn, help us count, please. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 
five, four, three, two, one. All bird. Yeah, look at that light. You can feel that rush up here. You can. You can. Yeah, that's the rush I was talking about, yeah. being down there in the middle of yeah, that. And if you're in the middle and, and you're near a balloon, go up and thank the crew and the pilot for coming out and doing this for you. They they love to hear that. Also a good idea here. Now it's getting dark. Yes. <laughs> watch where you're walking and watch where you're going. Turn that flashlight on on your phone or the screen on so yes. that you can watch what's going on out there. There is a rope attached to the top of every one of those balloons, and there's probably a person on the ground attached to the other end of that rope. Yes. So be careful where you're walking, not to mention that there's a rope between the balloon and the chase vehicle, the tie-off, yes. we call that. So uh, try not to walk between those. We certainly don't want anyone to, to have... Uh, any issues out there, we want you to no. enjoy the safe. remaining eight days of this 46th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Cannon. Okay, we're letting the balloons cool down a little bit before we do our next burn here Very in just nice a moment. Job, Mr. Parks. You betcha. Again, crowd, we want to hear you count them down with what us. What you like next? A flicker. We're going to do a flicker burn next. So that's the one again for the video here. So now's the time to set it on video and get the selfie video ready. <laughs> that's a good way to do that. You know, you can be able to kind of get that nice strobe effect in your <laughs> selfie video there. So a flicker burn. A flicker burn. Here we go. Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, seven six, six, five, four. Three, two, one, flicker burn. Yeah, I love that. Oh, nice. Good job. Very nice. Hey, you know, we did kind of a, a takeoff on a balloon glow this morning at opening ceremonies. Yeah, there was a little mini glow there. Yeah, yeah. So the idea was is that we um, we set our um, our balloons of the day off to the national anthem sung by the New Mexico Peace Choir. And so our cannon balloon and our fiesta balloon went off this morning and uh, to that national anthem. And as they got to the end of the national anthem, all the balloons that weren't immediately going to go cold inflated hit all those burners at the same time. There was probably four or five, 400, uh, maybe 300, between four and 350, I don't know. I'm, that was th something. All of those burners went wow. off together. That was amazing. I have started to see pictures from the sky. So the cannon balloon that went off, I got a nice picture from there. Oh, good. The Mexico governor, Susana Martinez, was in the Fiesta balloon. She has sent us a video she has taken of that glow. Oh. So we'll be showing that. Share that uh, picture with me. Uh, uh, I will. And the, we're going to be showing those on our uh, feeds here. So if you get here early in the morning, you'll be able to see those oh, um, here as well. Um, I've seen some other great pictures from the sky. It was just a fabulous way to start off this 46th edition a, of the Blue Fiesta. That was chilling to see that. This I morning. was up there on the stage, lots of people around the stage, and just – the, the choir singing and the burners going off and the flags in the air with the balloons. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was just incredible this morning. All burn they're calling for here, folks. So an all burn. An all burn. Need everybody to count it down with us. Here we go. All burn in 10, ten 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All burn. <laughs> Great job, pilots. I think there's a way to get more light on the field at one of those, though. And I think that's we get uh, the crowd involved here. Right, I time. think it's an all burning and all light them up. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so if you have a flashlight on your phone, which yep, many flashlight do. or the uh, want to be turning the screen on here, what we're going to do is when we count down to this next all burn, we want you to turn your lights, your flashlights. We want. Can we do it all? We'll do one quick one, then we'll get yours. All right? Is that okay? Can we yeah. do that, please? Thank you. All right. Once you light up your phones. We're starting to take over the deal here. We're gonna, we, we're, are. we are going to get fired out we of this are. job here. <laughs> so we're, pushing so the we're gonna we're gonna have everybody light up their phones, their cameras, and the balloons all at one time. So an all burn, all glow, all phone light them up here. All righty. Here we go. In ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Everybody light it up. <laughs> yeah, look how much more light there is. There is. Yeah, great. Thanks for letting us do that one. You did it too. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was gonna tell you, I like that hat with the lights on there. I got some uh, buddies in town here from uh, Texas for the weekend here, and they uh, managed to find me a uh, 2017 Balloon Fiesta hat here because they noticed I wasn't wearing. I was wearing oh, a 2008 this you morning. You were. Yeah. So they got me by 2017. So thanks, Don and Maria. Appreciate that. They're here tonight having a great time. He's posted some great pictures on uh, Facebook, and he's gonna let us put some on our video feeds here um, tomorrow as well so we like that so now you wanted a twinkle a twinkle a flicker twinkle whatever you think it's a twilight twinkle goes so we better do twinkle burns yep yeah twinkle flicker burn twinkle or flickle burn here we go in 10 9, nine eight, eight seven nine. six five four three Two, one, twinkle flick. <laughs> twinkle, twink. Twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> they got the message. Look at that. Yeah. Great job. Great job out there. Boy, this is looking great. This is looking really fine. What a beautiful night. That's why we do this Balloon Fiesta in October. Yeah. You know you know yeah. the story about that. Yes. That uh, the first one, of course, took place in April uh, 1972. Coronado was the birthday of KOB Radio. And then the next one's kind of moved into the February time frame. Because of the World Championships, well, that's snow time here in New Mexico. And wind time. Yeah, exactly. So that's not a good time. October is ideal. Yep. So in um, 1975, we moved to October. But that would have been a year and a half from the previous one. So actually, in the Feb we held, continued to hold one in February. And so we actually had two balloon fiestas in 1975. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, yep. So that was. Uh, that's why if you actually do the math, yeah, since this is, it, it doesn't work out. But if you consider the fact that we that we actually did two in 1975, yeah. that's how that uh, works out that way. And of course, it also means that we're only four years away from the 50th. Uh, they're already talking about that. They are. They are already in the planning. So we're good there. So do you have a preference here? Uh, an all burn. Okay, we're so gonna we're going to call for an all burn here. So an all burn. Make sure their radios are ready. You want to hold me? Because we're communicating to the pilots on the radios as well, and our uh, officials that are up here calling this have uh, just had their dinner delivered. <laughs> so uh, are you ready? Here we go. An all burn in 10, Good. 9, um, 8, 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, one, three, three, two, two one. All burn. That sound, that rush, never gets old. 
never gets old. I love the crowd reaction. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Randy. Our audio excellence folks here really doing a great job, not oh, only in uh, getting us some great camera shots here, but uh, keeping us uh, looking good here. And there's one of our uh, cameras out there on the, on the ground. Keeping the graphics up, just making us look good so we can uh, right. just talk about things. Streaming live again at BlueFiesta.com. And, you know, it's a, it's a great way for you to um, go out there and uh, tell folks about it. Be sure and tweet it. BlueFiesta.com is the site. 2,100 hits this morning. Um, Early on, when we, we, we turned the feed on and immediately had 75 people watching. That's cool. So it's great. So uh, tell all your friends and neighbors we are doing it every single event here at Balloon Fiesta. Mass Ascensions and competition mornings. We'll get started with our live feed uh, somewhere around 530 in the morning mountain time and about 6, uh, 6 o'clock or 630 in the evenings for our evening events. And we'll uh, go through the events and bring it all to you live um, with the commentary from myself, Larry Ahrens, and our colleague, Glenn Moyer, who uh, has the evening off tonight yes. um, so that I can have the, an evening off at the end of the week. Fireworks coming up tonight uh, about 8 o'clock. Uh, laser light show just prior to that. Yep. Uh, and they're pretty prompt on that schedule, too. So. Yeah, you know, it's amazing for an event that is so weather-dependent and you know, you can't say that um, you're going to have the balloon inflated at 8.03 or whatever time yeah. it is. It takes time, and sometimes it takes a few more minutes or things like that. It's uh, It's been great about how um, able we've been able to stay on time here or close to it. But you know what? Hey, it's close, and it's great fun, so it doesn't really matter there. Yeah. So, Flicker burn. All right. Flicker burn. Here we go. Flicker, folks. This is the video one. Flicker in 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, flicker. Oh, <laughs> a little test pop there. They're checking for the win. They heard us talk about fireworks, yeah, and they're uh, <laughs> they're getting anxious over there. <laughs> That's it. Okay. What a show. This is Oh, look a great at that show. shot. Look at that shot. There's nothing else like this anywhere in the world. What you, you see tonight. You're right. A lot of balloon rallies and festivals, uh, they do balloon glows too. Right. And uh, you know, but you're right. With you put 261 of these out here. And don't forget Thursday and Friday night of this week, we're going to do this with special shape balloons. Oh. It's so a, our uh, special, drink. yeah, our special shape glodio, combining the idea of setting up all those animals and people and just any kind of shape you can think of, we got to rodeo them all in, corral them all in, and do a glodio, glow rodeo combination there as well. The Blue Fiesta invented a word. We did and yeah. trademarked <laughs> it as well. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> it's they did. Trademark too. You betcha. <laughs> Very good. The good news is we don't have to say Glodio trademark every time we say that. <laughs> uh, you can say it. When you put it down, you got to put the TM bar by it. What would you like next, ma'am? An all burn. Right. An all burn, pilots. An all burn. Folks, We this may be a great time for folks to turn their lights on again. Let's try Flash it. Flashlights and cameras for this all burn. All light them up. So we want uh, an all burn here coming up. We're waiting on the pilot radio. But we want all of you to participate here as well. It's a good selfie moment, too. It's also a good selfie moment. Look at the crowd out there with our cameras there. Ready? All burn. Here we go. An all burn in 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, seven 6, six five, 5, 4, 3, three 2, two one. 1. All burn. Yeah. You're killing it. That's great. Woohoo. Beautiful. Spectacular. This is great. This is great. Oh, there's center stage. Yeah, well, you to, were uh, you I talked, talked with to Beth, Beth today. Yep. She, she's a nice lady. She's great. She's also a federally designated examiner, 
So when it comes oh. time to take your check ride to get your pilot's license, yeah. she is one of two here in town who can uh, oh. sign you off on that besides actually going to the FAA themselves. Ray Bear would be the other one. So, uh, yeah, she teaches a lot of folks, and she gives check rides, signing off that you're qualified to fly balloons, either as a private pilot or a commercial pilot, two oh. different rating levels there She's as just well. a really nice person. I and had a long yeah. chat with her today yeah. while uh, I was yeah. standing by her balloon. So we talked while you were out there about how the inside looks like a regular shaped balloon. It Did does, you notice that yeah, when we talked about that? It does. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. You'll see that in all of those there as well. So now, um, as we um, start to kind of move, uh, wind this down just a little bit here, um, some of the balloons are going to uh, probably start to deflate. I see Intel taking theirs down here. Really and there's a little madness time. to that method as well, too. Yeah. So the idea here is that what, and what happened the first year, we said, okay, that was the last one, oh, yeah. and everybody deflated at the same time. <laughs> well, these balloons have 90 to 105,000 cubic feet of hot air in them. 300 of them, that's, you know, millions and millions of pieces of hot air that all of a sudden went up. We created our own weather system. There was a vortex out there. Exactly. As the hot air went up, it had to be replaced with cold air from, oh. the, uh, from the inside to replace it. And so, man, the winds were just whipping us all around. So we don't do that anymore. <laughs> now we let balloons inflate a few at a time here. And we're ready for a flicker burn. A flicker burn. Here we go. Flicker, please count with us, folks. Make sure everybody's on board. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, three, two, one. Flicker. Alrighty, so we've uh, we've still got a number of burns left to get in here. So um, if you've been taking the same angle all the time, now's a great time to shift angles. Move over to another balloon, point a different direction, get some other angles here, get some video angles here. Don't forget when you post all of those pictures and videos, be sure and use the hashtag Balloon Fiesta. And put them up on Twitter and put them up on Instagram as well. I so assume that's Tony, the cameraman out there. Those um, are great shots. I think getting. that's David out there Is on the David? camera. Yep, that's Tony's David. got the night off. Oh, good. But we're getting some great well, shots from are. David out there. Yep, we sure are. And so go ahead and put those pictures and those videos up on Twitter and up on your Instagram accounts. Be sure and use the hashtag Balloon Fiesta. Um, because we're watching for those, and we're uh, taking samples of those and sharing them throughout the day here when the balloons aren't flying. We want to look at balloons when those are happening. When they're not flying, we've got some great uh, Twitter sub stuff up. There's a shot of it right there. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening at the top there, but Kerry Huntercut is talking about the uh, balloon fiesta flying there. I saw Darth Vader and Yoda on there as well. So, uh, yep, some good stuff there. Which did I? An Auburn. So an all burn here. Let's have a lot of uh, audience participation here. Big loud countdown so we can hear it up here, please. All burn in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all burn. That's great. I love how Beambo the Bear lights up with that white fabric there and the Isn't Verizon great. balloon. Yes. And even the Cannon balloon with the red and white, you get the nice colors there as well. I saw Tall Stevie out there um, just a moment ago as we were kind of flashing by things. There's Beambo the Bear there. And there's the shot of the Do Dosekis there. And the air gas balloon. Of course, we mentioned the stork here as well. And so it's nice to have these cameras along the field. We can see other ends of the field as this goes on here. 
So again, as uh, some of the balloons uh, start to slowly bring down their balloons here so that we don't create our own weather patterns there, um, the crews are going to need uh, your help to clear some space for them. Be careful where you're walking. Do not attempt to walk over a balloon. Step over it no matter how squeezed on. together it is. Go walk around the other end. And, of course, now those lines that were going from the basket up are now going from the basket over. So uh, turn those flashlights on. Turn those lights on, the screens. Be careful where you're walking. Do not step on the balloon. Uh, we still have uh, 13 more events to do, and our pilots want to fly all of them. So uh, do not put them out of commission by uh, potentially put them out of commission by stepping on the balloon. Flicker burn, please. A flicker burn. Here we go. Flicker in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Flicker. Yes. Well, now that a couple have opened up here, I see Humpty Dumpty out there. Rich Lawhorn's out there for us. Beautiful. Point. That's why you got to need to walk out in the middle yeah, of those. If you stand on the end, you see the same 12, 13 balloons. But when you walk out there in the middle of it, you really get a different perspective of what this is all about. And that's the same thing in the morning, too, you know, to get out there in the middle. Air gas is the official of uh, gas sponsors so propane they provide the propane to our pilots and so uh, they are uh, our official gas uh, sponsor here takes a lot of folks a lot of sponsors a lot of uh, volunteers to be able to put something like this together so we are uh, certainly thankful for them uh, obviously Dos Equis is there air gas is there I actually see the CPA uh, Society of uh, from New Mexico here um, as well, we've uh, got all kinds of sponsors out here. And, you know, it's a great thing your business can sponsor at many different levels, from sponsoring a balloon to becoming something like Canon is our presenting sponsor. Canon, by the way, just uh, a couple of days ago, announced that they are extending their contract Wonderful. to be the presenting sponsor. It now goes through 2020. Nice. So we will have Good Cannon news. on board for another three years here. Good Cannon news. has been a fabulous sponsor here. They've been especially good to us here on the tower, uh, providing us, uh, lending us some really nice high-powered image-stabilizing binoculars that come in very handy for when the balloons are flying. We can spot things far off. And, of course, they'll help you with your, can your Cannon cameras. They will clean it, adjust it for you, give you photo tips. They've got a backdrop and a balloon set up, a basket set That's up there that you cool can take some pictures in. And, uh, right, and a checkout system. You want to try yeah. out that new uh, high-level yeah. camera you've been thinking about they'll, buying? They'll loan you one. They'll loan it to you. Just That's your right. License and you, you That's got it. it. It's kind of what we're doing with the binoculars. They're right. kind of loaning them us for the week, so kind of a check out there you know, as Ken's well. Ken's one of those sponsors really engages. In they do. Event. They yeah. are. Brian over there has been uh, great to work with. I met their head of security, Robert, over there. Oh, great fun. Uh, yeah, and uh, Robin, I think, is uh, the other one I met over there today. Um, yeah, great folks. Um, to be able to work with on things here. And, of course, the, they were the balloon of the day with uh, Johnny Petrin flying that for us as well. What would you like next, miss? An Auburn. An Auburn. Uh, things are all cooled off. You're an Auburn. Cut us down, folks. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all burn. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Of course, don't go anywhere when this is over. Because uh, in just a few minutes here, we'll be doing the uh, laser light show. Brought to us by Alaska Airlines. And then as soon as that is over, our fabulous Afterglow fireworks, presented in part by the Albuquerque Journal, will be taking place. It is the best fireworks show you have ever seen. You're not going to want to miss that as well. And uh, you can see it from anywhere in the field. But I'll give you a hint. If you head to the west side a little bit, you might get just a little extra 
special view. Uh, yeah. That's a good way to say it. Is that a good way to put it? A yep. little extra special view by heading to the west side of the field. Of course, as you walk across the field, be careful where you walk. Some of our balloons are starting to deflate and back up. And, you know, um, this is a lot of work for the crew, too. They're packing this balloon up in the dark. Um, they may have flashlights and things like that, but they've got to pack all that up. And then they get to go refuel it tonight so that they have enough fuel to be able to fly in the morning as well. So fueling is not far away. It's on the northwest corner of the field there. But it is a, um, it's still a, a piece of the uh, the day to go through. Hey, Kim Besley's here. There she is. Hi, Hi Kim. We're back. You're back. We're back from Gasland. Yep. <laughs> so what a fabulous looking launch here oh tonight. Oh my gosh, was that cool. It was absolutely <laughs> fabulous. And the balloons are headed out of here now towards the, uh, kind of towards the south and east. And it looked to me like maybe they were getting the gap. What do you think? Looked like it from here. We kind of lost it behind the building here, but it sure looked like that way to me. Yeah. Well, the gap, for those who don't know about the gap, uh, is uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's way by jeans, yeah. Yeah, Larry says. Um, it's, uh, they're basically, they're trying to fly through to Harris Canyon. And um, if they do that, they can save ballast because they don't have to go so high and go all across all 10,600 feet of the sand is. Right. Stand by for a second, Kim. Sure. We're going to get a flicker burn in here. Cool. We're going to get a flicker burn in here. We'll come back talk a little more gas in just a second. So a flicker burn, please. Flicker, flicker, flicker in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Flicker. Yeah. Very nice. This is nice being able to see all the way down the rest of the field here. Now, of course, we've had great shots on our camera feed here, uh, courtesy of our uh, Audio Excellence uh, crew here. You know who's getting a really good view of this? The guys in the gas balloons. Uh-huh, they yeah, are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, especially the last ones out. Yep, they yeah, did. this is just gorgeous. So where uh, we're we talking three to four-day flights. Uh, what's uh, the latest word on trajectory? Probably not three to four, but maybe two to three. Okay. And I have not heard any updates uh, on trajectory, but the, uh, the, the plan seems to be playing out, which is that they'll go out and across eastern New Mexico overnight relatively slowly and then pick up speed as they go off to the north and the east out up towards the Midwest and, and maybe beyond. And, of course, we can track all this live on BalloonFiesta.com. Which I would be doing right now, except my phone went dead. <laughs> but um, oh yeah, but. yeah, <laughs> got to figure out a way to bring those extra batteries along for that kind of stuff here. So, so uh, have, have or multiple devices. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the plan, and it looks like uh, we might get a couple of three days, and maybe get up towards even even towards the east coast, and and maybe up into Canada. So. Great. We'll be tracking them, and uh, I'm sure you will be as soon as you get your phone charged or get by a, a computer there as well. And uh, we'll be depending on you for updates throughout the week until they're all down safely, and we uh, know who the winner of the 22nd America's Challenge is. Stay tuned. As Stay they tuned, say. as they say. That's and it. And I brought your microphone back, by the way. Oh, great. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. We actually did get a lot of your uh, audio from down there, so we appreciated your commentary and things great. down there. Thank you. And uh, since we've known each other a long time, I could almost finish your sentence when your audio <laughs> dropped out. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, pretty well, amazing. See, neither of us are as old as we've known each other. For, That's so. true. That's very good. <laughs> well, you fellas have a great night and great show out there to all the hot air pilots. Great. Thanks, Kim. We'll be talking to you throughout the rest of the week. A final all burn, final all burn, last chance for that selfie picture with the cameras and with the burners going off here as well. An all burn, pilots, it's the last one. Let's make it a nice long all burn. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all burn. Auburn. All righty. Hey, let's give all of our pilots a great big round of applause and cheer. Let them know how much you appreciate our Twilight Twinkle Glow. Coming up in a moment, the Laser Light Show sponsored by Alaska Airlines. And then, Art. The Afterglow Fireworks oh. brought to us in part by the Albuquerque Journal. 
Hey, look, we even got ourselves on the, the speed here tonight look at that. Uh, as well. Yep. I'm flickering and, uh, my hat. So she, she's over. She's over here. She's right off of the side of the camera. There. Oh, look. There are safety officials. There's, there's Melissa Ball. Bon, there's our assistant Blue Meister <laughs> calling the shots for us tonight here. Thanks for nice joining job. us. Enjoy your dinner there. We had a great time, and we look forward to doing this again tomorrow night. Of course, right. before tomorrow night, we've got tomorrow morning with a mass ascension. Had a great one this morning. We're going to have even a better one tomorrow. All the winds continue to look good. We're going to anybody check the weather. We're going to have a box in the morning. We should have a box is what the wow. weather guys are telling us. Yeah. Things can always change. Of course, the whole idea of a box is you go one direction at one altitude. You go up high. You go back the other way, kind of making this nice box pattern. Um, and uh, they've been talking for a while. The local meteorologists, weather guys on the TV stations have been talking about the fact that that will uh, probably happen and that we're going to have great weather here as well. So I think uh, we've got a, we've got our uh, glow in here tonight. We've had a fabulous launch of our gas balloon race. Be sure and track that live on BalloonFiesta.com. This has been live streamed on Balloon Fiesta. So if you've just tuned in or you're hearing about it now, go back to BalloonFiesta.com. And a little bit later tonight, I'm not sure what the turnaround time is. Uh, an archive of this uh, feed should be there. If it says something about September in a test feed, ignore that. Click it anyway. Um, they're there. We'll fix those uh, little glicks here uh, as we go along. A fun night, Art. Thank you. Great night. Larry Aarons has been here. I'm Art Lloyd, Jr. Thanks to uh, all of our crew from Audio Excellence and my assistant producers, Lucy and Brandon. We appreciate those folks here. Thanks for watching us here tonight. Thanks for joining us here on the field. We will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. 6 o'clock is Dawn Patrol, and we'll get started with that, followed by our mass ascension at 7. So until tomorrow morning, have a great night. Enjoy the laser show and the fireworks. We'll keep the video up while that goes on. Good night.